sports shopped? Sure, you are vegan. With profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated enlightened masters, we bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by their divine grace. Part 3 of 4 Etc. Vegan, see how you quietly influence others to become vegan too. Thank you. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. We pray for Ukraine or Ukraine. Eat, sleep, listen to story. <laughs> and that's it. Huh? Sleep, sleep, eat, listen to stories. Sleep, eat, listen to stories. <laughs> yeah, and then run around. Watch a program on TV, yeah? Mm. At 7.30, it's the program. Okay, now sleep, eat, listen to story. Yeah, what is this story? Okay. Okay, I'm just going to tell you something that I have discovered, eh? Hmm. Do you have any questions, by the way, so that I can tell you, that I can explain to you? Huh? No? <laughs> don't care, don't know. <laughs> you guys so lazy to even think, not even ask. Oh, before you asked a lot of questions, and how come nobody asked anymore recently? Yeah. Uh, this is a late question. Uh, what is uh, actually a good disciple? We're talking about uh, good, good master should be like this, give true light and omnipresent. Uh, what is the criterion for a good disciple? No idea. <laughs> I haven't seen one. <laughs> <laughs> If I've seen one, then I know what, but right now I don't know what to tell you. Mm, yeah. So, you think you are a good disciple, perhaps? No, no, no. I, yeah. I dare not think that. I, I ask them every day uh, um, so. if I'm still worthy to be your disciple. Um, if you're not, you just go, man. You know what to do. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm hanging around, but. Just hang around. We then. are still worthy. Actually, uh, we are. What do you want me to tell you again? How oh, much we excellent. should strive. <laughs> How much we should strive to deserve that. Oh, don't bother. <laughs> don't bother trying. You know what? You do your best, yeah? And God does the rest. I told you already, in this world, you are all good. You know? What's good about you? You eat vegan. You don't kill anybody. That's what I call good already. <laughs> Everything else, I don't know. <laughs> yeah? At least you're not harming anybody. Now you don't kill anybody on purpose, I hope. <laughs> and you are vegan. Nah? Okay. Let's stop right there. Yeah? And if you can meditate a little bit here and there, I'm grateful. Okay? <laughs> Talking about good disciple is difficult. Remember the two rubies and one half story. Yeah? No? Or four rubies and a half at the story I told you? You forgot? The king. Yeah. No, no, not the king. The the master. Uh, there was a Sikh guru, huh? I told you already, but I tell you again and you pretend to laugh, okay? <laughs>
Laughter is good for you, even if you fake it. I heard that uh, your cells also pretend that you're happy. Yeah. Huh? You told them. No, no, it's scientifically proven. Yeah. I can only read it. Okay, anyway. There's some people who are like so called followers of the guru, you know? Not really followers, no, hang around it, you know? <laughs> like, are you okay? And they thought that Sikh guru has a lot of money. Well, he can raise a lot of money because he has so many disciples. So one day they schemed, you know, between themselves. They said, oh, let's go and ask the master to raise some money for us, then we'll be rich. Yeah. And then we'll just uh, say that, okay, we need the money, and then the master would never refuse anyway. Yeah. So let's go and say, master, please uh, raise some funds for us. You know, if you just ask, and each disciple gives just one rupee, then we will have. Enough. We don't ask for much. One rupee each. Oh, it's all very little money. Just like if I ask you for one dollar each, you know? Yes. It's not much, is it? <laughs> but for millions of people, that's lots of money, no? Okay. So that's what they, they thought that would be done. So they asked my master, and the master said, OK, not today, maybe uh, I will see what I can do. They wanted to construct a house for themselves and buy a Mercedes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sikh guru said, OK, come back another day. Today is too late, nobody is here. Okay? They came back a few days later and asked the master for the money. The master said, Oh, I haven't had a chance to <laughs> uh, organize that yet, so please come back another time. And they came back another time. The master was still busy or some other excuse. He said, Come back another time. And finally, after they kept pushing too much, the master put out four and a half rubies. Yeah. And they said, Master, maybe you misunderstood us. What I mean is, one ruby from each disciple, then we would have enough. The Master said, Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> uh, the great Master Guru Nanak was the true disciple, and the successor of Guru Nanak is another disciple, and the successor after that is another disciple, and my master was another disciple, and as for me, I'm only half, so <laughs> half a disciple yet. So I give you four and a half rupees. <laughs> Others are not disciples. You understand? In India, they say that a master would be very, very lucky if he found one disciple, true disciple in his lifetime. But I'm happy with you. Why push? <laughs> I'm happy. Did I complain? No. What did I say just this afternoon when I met you? You're the best. Yes, you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, still not happy. Want to push for a little bit more? <laughs> You're super. <laughs> super. <laughs> okay. You know what? Your mind gives you a lot of tricks. Your body gives you trouble. Hmm. Your work pressure, pressure makes you think you are nothing and you're tired. Sometimes you don't meditate. Well, never mind about all that. We try our best, okay? And let heaven do the rest. What else can we do, huh? We can only do our best in given circumstances. Oh, yeah, don't worry. You all will go to heaven, huh? You all will be liberated. That's all I can say to you. Hmm? No more coming back. Unless you want to, you're welcome. <laughs> there are a lot of cakes <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah, after I die, they will celebrate Ching Hai Day continuously. And you surely have cakes. <laughs> Maybe better than now, even. If you come back, I will probably have a big temple. <laughs> yeah, look at all them. <laughs> the dead masters. <laughs> yeah? Look. Hmm? How many churches does Jesus have now? Oh, now, tell me. How many? How many churches does he have now? Okay. How many temples does Buddha have now? How many uh, temples does Lao Tzu have now? Mm? And Kong Tzu, or the Sikh gurus, the Amrita. Oh, it's like a beautiful palace, you know, the Sikh uh, temple in Amrita. Yeah, it's beautiful, big, 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 and it houses hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, and look at the uh, Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Peace be upon him. How many mosques does he own now? Are you hear me? Yeah? So please do come back. <laughs> you, you would not have to sit on the floor and squeeze it like this. I'm sure at that time. <laughs> <laughs>
you probably see a big temple or church somewhere. Jingaiism. <laughs> yeah, welcome everybody. Just sign your name and you are a disciple. <laughs> There's no need to initiate, no need to vegan. All this nonsense is too much trouble. <laughs> Go inside, sit in the big temple for yourself. Just a cake. Huh? And cakes, a lot of cakes. Every Qinghai day, lots and lots of cakes. And they will make sure one side is an English uh, uh, Christmas pudding and the other side <laughs> is the fruitcake. If that's in France, huh? Maybe in Taiwan they have another kind, then they will continue the tradition of the last one. Yeah? And in my mosque or my temple, whatever, you probably see a yellow chair <laughs> with a table in front of it, and then some cup <laughs> and mineral water and flowers and a watch even, yeah? a clock, so that uh, <laughs> the empty chair knows what time is it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, look at us. We don't even have a place to sit, huh? I'm so sorry, guys. We could have had a bigger one, but there's always some urgent case to take care, yeah? Always some better cause <laughs> to spend my money on. So it's okay, huh? Yes. Now and again, we... That's why I don't make a retreat every the week, no? Yeah? Every two, every two, three months, you can bear, right? Yes. <laughs> you can make a happy face and come here. <laughs> But if every two, three weeks, oh, thank you, Master. I, <laughs> I'm busy, but I'll come next time. <laughs> yeah, I know human psychology, you know. Actually, I wouldn't have bothered you if we haven't had the, uh, you know, Ching Hai Day and all that, and also the release of the animal people's book. And for the animal people are sick, you know, I really made them come here, yeah. Master, you're not bothering us. We're so happy. To you're so happy? <laughs> <laughs> Especially a lot of cakes. <laughs> we are so very grateful, Master, to be here. You are? Yeah, yeah. Really. I'm, I'm, I thank you, too. Yeah. Honestly, I was thinking of the room last time. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I'm not going back there. <laughs> But I won't, no? I told myself to come. I said, that's it. Your job, you just go, man. <laughs> like it or not, just go. <laughs> And here I am. Then I got a better room <laughs> with a lot of clothes. <laughs> Actually, two residents from Meoli came. And uh, don't worry about it. All this I wear so that they can sell. <laughs> 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 they sell everything that I touch, you know. The only thing they didn't sell yet is me. <laughs> 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 It's not that, honey. No, I'm still useful. <laughs> If they saw me, then nobody wears these clothes and, and nobody talks on DVD and, you know what I mean? Nobody sings off and all that. And they have nothing else to sell, so they keep it. <laughs> they keep the original tape. <laughs> you have a philosopher's stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know everything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyway, it's funny how whenever any masters are alive, they don't have much. Huh? Like Jesus, he walked bare feet. Huh? And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also didn't have any mosque, nothing. He was even hunted around, yeah? chased about, and his disciples were persecuted. Yeah? Through so much suffering when they were alive, and all the gurus before, even gurus, of the Sikh, yeah, or the Hindu master, or many others in Persia, or oh, they persecuted them, a lot of them. And after they died, they became famous. A lot of temples, a lot of churches uh, sprung out <laughs> for no, no reason. Yeah? Can you imagine? Humans are funny, huh? Yes. <laughs> I, I give up, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so if you want a temple or a bigger place, Please come back after I die. <laughs> How about you don't die? Mm, wow. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so that I come back here, you have more cakes? Yeah, that <laughs> oh, it's all right, honey. Yeah. When you, when you finish your job, you go, eh? What for stay here too long? If I don't die, then what, what do you do? You just leave me anyway. At 70, 60, or 80, 90, 100 max, she's gone. And then she's telling me, sit here, <laughs> feeding cakes to her children. <laughs> yeah. My God, I live very long already, you know. 
I've seen many good friends, good disciples gone. Yeah, good people. My parents are even gone. Recently, my mother is also gone. You don't know? You know. Some of you didn't watch TV. Okay, never mind. It's, she's happy. Yeah, actually, yeah, she's happy. It's just that uh, we in the physical realm, we, we miss something, you know, of the physical nearness. But they're happy. My parents are on, you know, four level. <laughs> happy, happy. Yeah. Grandma also together there, seeing each other. Hi! <laughs> you are my son. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's sad when you lose somebody you love in this physical realm because you don't see him no more. Yeah, of course, you see them from heaven, it's not the same. Huh? Yeah. I'm happy for her anyway. But I cannot say I'm not sad, you know. <laughs> I'm happy, but I'm sad. I'm sad, but I'm happy. <laughs> Nobody can understand that, huh? Yeah. Anyway, I took care of my parents the best I could. Yeah. Offer them whatever physical necessity that they needed yeah. and my love. And my liberation gift, yeah, I think it's the best. I think i done a good daughter part, no? Yeah, very much yeah. so. And some of the friends and disciples, they were so young, but they're gone, see? But I've done my part also. They're liberated, they go to the third, the fourth, you know, even the low fifth. Yeah? We're okay. Yeah. The physical body we can't always keep. Okay, I'm going to tell you some secrets. Hmm? I wrote it a long time ago. Right? I just dug it out from somewhere. I've been moving house too much. I left it. It's been a long time, this one. Ah, yeah, this, this light keeps my eyes go all the time. We need it, you see, but it makes me trouble. This eye is sensitive. Okay, let's see. <sighs> Did I tell you that all babies born into the free soul families will automatically be free also? Liberated? No, no okay, I tell you now. <laughs> it's a domino effect, okay? Yeah. So if you parents are already free souls, any babies born into your family will be automatically free. Wow. Yeah. Both parents have to be free. No, one is enough. One is yeah. enough. Okay. Do you know who? Oh. Oh, I just happened to come across my, my, uh, my past life when I noticed someone. Remember, the woman asked me where else have I been, king and queen or something. I just found it here. Uh, second time I was in Spain. I was a queen seven hundred years ago. My name was something like Yeni, Queen, Queen. <laughs> queen of Queens. Yeni, Queen of Queens. I don't know why it's a name like that. Oh, I'm too lazy to check. It just flashed in my mind. I wrote it down for fun. <laughs> Many years ago, and it's here. I <laughs> just found it yesterday. Okay, and what else? Okay, baby born free. You know how a man or woman become a man or woman or become gay or lesbian? No? no? Okay. I mean, I'm talking about uh, normal people, hey? But the spiritual practitioners are not the same, okay? Suppose you are in a man body now. Next life you want to be a woman, you can be a woman right away. You don't have to wait for the circle to complete, okay? The circle is like this, okay? Whatever, you mineral and all that, you come up, okay? A human. And you are a man first, okay? And then you become a gay next. I don't mean immediately, next life. But the circle is like that. You know, if you earn more merit, then you change your body and you become a gay. So a gay is better than a man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual level-wise, eh? according to what I see, uh -huh. I can't prove it. Okay. And then from gay, you become a lesbian. I mean, the next step, yeah? Not not the same life or the, not necessarily immediate next life, but probably next life or many lives ahead. Yeah, that is a step. Yeah, and then from lesbian you become bisexual, and then the next is woman. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> Telling you woman is precious. Didn't believe me. <laughs> but for your information, I was a man last life. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> but I haven't turned into a gay or lesbian or bisexual. <laughs> I didn't have to go through that. Eh? Because I'm a spiritual practitioner. If I want to be man, I be man. If I want to be woman, I be woman. Actually, this body I told you I had borrowed, yeah? The body was already stiff, you know? Already gone, cold and gone. So my father came back, but just by the way, he couldn't have revived me at all. You know, I just, I, I want to come, and I just went into the body. So I had no physical connection with the parents at birth at all. I came two years afterward, yeah. And the fifth level saint had inhabited this body before me, yeah, just to clear it up. And then I came in, okay? All right. And do you know about sudden combustion? Combustion is somebody suddenly burst himself to death. Spontaneous. It's spontaneous, yeah. Or sudden com combustion. That is a person going directly to hell. Times, times up. Wow. Yeah. Real fire? with the fire from themselves. Oh. They just disappear. They burn themselves to cinders. It's rare, but it happens. It's all over. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Okay, not everybody knows, but it happens. Okay, it's scary, I tell you. Don't wait until tomorrow to practice, huh? Mm. Some people are like that, you know? They can't even wait until they die to go to hell. Their time's up, they just... You know, the fire from hell just can't burn them like that. People say they burn themselves. It's not like that. It's just a connection with the negative realm. They go directly to hell. People can evolve directly from trees or animal people if they have good merit, yeah, and vice versa. Good merit is even that maybe sometimes a master plucks a flower from a tree or something, then that tree will evolve into a human being. Next life, yeah, after the tree dies. But they will not be so smart or lively, you know, they're a little bit dumb, but still liberated, <laughs> no problem. And vice versa, that's a scary thing, you know? Yes. To go up, okay, to go down, Phew, scary. My God, I could not even read my own writing. Look at that. <laughs> I write in the dark sometimes, you know, with a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, glue worm, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, or in the cave, you know, sometimes when I meditate. Whoa. I think I give that up. I wrote like a doctor. <laughs> Doctor's daughter. It's not very far, is it? Well, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, as I told you already, that like 11, 11, 0, 3, you know, 2003, 90% of the world population has been free. Wow. wow. I probably told you already. Right here. And just a note left over. A lot of stuff. Oh, I was Lao Tzu, Tsongkhapa, Jesus. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Quetzalcoatl, Mexican. Yeah. Rama V of Thailand, four times Chinese kings, twice Spanish queen. I was Rama, you know, Rama, like exile Rama, yeah? English citizen. I was, one time before last, I was an English citizen and then an Indian, and I was Kangxi. It's written here even. Uh, if it's written, it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first time I'm a Vietnamese. I mean, in the body of a Vietnamese person. Okay, never mind. What was that? So much stuff here. Oh, I read from the beginning, maybe. I lost some of it. It's just some left and some lost, you know, somehow. 
I said that 3,000, year 3,000, almost all will be veggie, vegan. I, I saw it here in a flash or something. I wrote it down for you. Oh, just for myself, actually. And now I just found it two days ago in a black book. You know, some notes here, some notes there, and I put them together for you. I don't know which one is first, which one second. Anyway, I just read it randomly, okay? Mm -hmm. If I can't even read it. <laughs> I give up one already. Look. Uh, oh, yeah, God. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is all other things for me only. About the council, about the universal council. Okay, well. Hmm. Uh, I should have gone to India, but I didn't. Aliens exist. <laughs> Just now, somebody, the uh, journalist asked me about alien, huh? Perhaps you didn't understand. Alien exists from other planets or are good for humans. The so-called bad ones are man-made for ulterior purposes. If aliens really wanted to harm us, they would have done so a long time ago. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Yeah. And then the technologies they have, they just, you know, with the technology they have, we would have no chance to survive if they wanted to harm us. They just visit for info, etc., like we do to the moon. Yeah, like we go to the moon to check out the moon. I said, about 20 councils have come down. I am the 20th. Wow. Wow. Okay, never mind. I don't want to say anymore. We should not. This is too much for you. If we stop there. I will let you know something else. Okay. The lady before, the journalist lady asked me about Martians, Mars and the moon. <laughs> Look at that. Here, I have it. Moon and Martian visit us sometimes. Moon people, yeah? They are more advanced, invisible to human eyes. So are the Venusians, etc. They are not more spiritually advanced, just technology more advanced. Moon people are a little bit more aggressive than the other planets above, you know other planets, Venus and Mars. The moon saw us come. <laughs> we were curious, but did not mind, as we did nothing to harm them. The Martian, Venusians, mooners look like us. Big eyes, they come from all the galaxies, much farther from us. That's all I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more, but that's all there is. <laughs> they look like us, but they are not, you know, they are not having a physical body. They can manifest if they want to. They don't need it. Yeah, we cannot manifest an invisible body, but they are invisible. They can manifest a, a, a physical body if they want to. I told you already many times, even the fifth level person, you know, Rarely, but they also can come down and manifest for a while, you know. It's suffering, but they can do it, yeah? Or the astral people, they come and go all the time. I told you already, yeah, before, how many days and blah, 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 yeah. Oh, probably it's here. Governments have UFO 50 times faster than normal airplanes. Nothing compared to aliens within 10 years, we can have these two fly around. <laughs> and I, I joke to myself, group meditation will be more frequent. <laughs> 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 I have written that. 
<laughs> well, they they are planning these uh, flying cars already, no? Yes. yes. Already, I I saw it somewhere. I saw it on the news. Hopefully, two three years we have flying cars. <laughs> Better transport around, also good for group meditation. <laughs> I wrote group meditation. I was saying after my birthday, blah, blah, I will go to Europe, and I did. At that time, I didn't go to Europe to stay, but I wrote it down already, and now I really went to Europe. <laughs> I mean, for a long time, and I went to England and stayed, and had a hotel and all that. That was long years ago, eh? Must be a few years before. Yeah. Okay, and this is all kind of... The noble quality, I will check in somebody. Even the most powerful religious leader, 30-40% human cells, and 30-40% noble quality only. So, as we say, the clothes don't make a monk, huh? Yeah. I'm surprised myself too. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised, but yet I'm surprised. <laughs> I would expect them to have a little bit more quality, the way they look, you know, so noble or so holy, but noble quality is very low. So the humans are not what they think they are. I'm, you know, comparing. Even my dog people, <laughs> they have 50% nobility or 40% minimum. My bird people, minimum 20% NQ, noble quality. Maximum 50%. Noble quality. Disciples, minimum 2%. <laughs> Maximum 30%. Noble quality. I wrote it for myself, actually, you know, by the way, I found it, so I tell you. Elephant people, 30%. General, eh? Some have a little more, some have less. Horse people, 32%. The pig people, 30%. <laughs> the chicken people, 4%. So I told you, I wrote it here for myself. Look, you're my witness, ne? I'm not making it up. So the humans are not what they think they are. I have written it, it's for myself, eh? I didn't write it today for you. I didn't remember I wrote that, but I did. I'm just shaking my head, you know? One one day I said to my attendant, you know, long a uh, few months ago, I said, "Oh, you know that guy was talking to myself, my bird person. This one has how much percent? That one has how much percent nobility?" And then he said, "How much he has?" I said, "You want to know?" So he said, "Yes, yes, please." I said, ten percent." He said, "Only ten percent?" I said, "That's very good already. Many people have only two percent." <laughs> and. And he asked me about the big one in Italy, you know, <laughs> big religious figure. <laughs> and I said, 30%. He said, ah, very good. Oh, 30%, because compared to him, he's only 10, you know. You know, the, the P, yeah? Yes. So I said, yeah, he has a lot of, 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 of NQ, as much as an elephant person. <laughs> <laughs> elephant people, 30%. Most people, 32. <laughs> so he was laughing so much, you know. We don't go out and try to uh, humiliate anybody or to offend anyone, okay? Because you are my disciple. I have to let you know. I'm just telling you the truth so that you know humans are not always what they think they are. And that outward appearance does really deceive you. It does deceive me also, eh? That's why I want to find out. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't have time to nose into people's business. I want to know whether I'm right or I'm wrong about somebody, whether people are worthy of reverence, whether 
the humans are worshipping the right one. At least it have some noble quality and something good to offer to humankind. I'm sorry. Noble quality you have to earn also. Yes. Also, just a small question. Yeah. Uh, how much uh, should a uh, fifth level uh, saint uh, have? Noble quality? Yeah. It depends, it depends. Depends if the low fib, high fib. High fib. High fib. <laughs> Maybe 80%. Oh, wow. Just to have a comparison. Yes, yes. Anything else? So. But they could have 90, 20, 100%. I mean 120 or 90 percent or more. Master, among all the animals on Earth, which animal has the most noble quality? Well, I didn't compare yet, but... I can tell you already some like elephant people, 30 horse people, 32. Dogs? Huh? Dogs? Dog people. They have 50. Dolphin people, 20. Cat people, 10. Cows people. Did I write out any cows? Oh, yeah. No. 40. The cow people, 40. The Swan person that I fed, 40. Yes. And her partner, 30. He's a male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. Look, I wrote it here. By the way, you know? By the way, because you asked. The female somehow has more. The duck also, the female duck has more NQ than the... Look, a mother duck, 5% NQ. A father duck... Oh, the duck people that I tamed, 8%. eight not really tame, but they are not afraid of me. They come often and eat. That's eight percent, and the other wilder people, five percent. Yeah. The kuts, you know, like Asian kuts people, three percent, five percent depends. In my third book, you will know more about the wild. Yes. About which wild animal people have names, individual names, just like you and I and which don't have, and why. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, you know, two more months, I already finished the book. They just have to, to lay out and print it out. Let me uh, prove it, you know? Because I took a lot of photos of nature, of the, the forest, and all the beautiful pictures, lakes and animals, people. I took, like, 99.9% of the photos myself with a simple camera because I can't fit them and carry a lot of bread. You know, I carry two bags of bread and it's never enough. And the camera as well and the binoculars <laughs> to see where they are. Yeah, and have to walk on a very thin, uh, thin bridge. Yeah, to go over across the island and all that. Or sometimes I have to roll the boat myself. I can't have all that. So I have to have a very simple camera, small one, pocket one. Yeah. But I, I took all the pictures, most of the pictures myself, except the one that you see me in it. That was not me who took it. <laughs> I tried, but I saw it in my nose in the, in the photo after it was developed. I couldn't do it. Not far enough. Mm. Now, the big people have 30%, huh? yeah. as much as an elephant person. They're very intelligent and noble. Okay, there's some more revelations. Are you ready? Are you want to go eat? No. No? Seven o'clock, man. No? So much cake. Full of cakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but it's 7.30. Somebody must go and watch TV in the program, no? I also miss the beginning of the program. I want to watch it. It's so lively, lively, beautiful. Uh, because if I don't watch it today, I never have a little chance to watch it again. I know, but I know that. I know that, but I don't have time tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah, most of the time, if I can't watch it today, it's very difficult for me to watch it again because I'm not like you who have time. And every day is just a busy day. Yeah. But never mind. Okay, well, if we can make it quickly, then oh, whoever go watch, okay, I sacrifice it. Don't care. Okay. Huh? What? Just 20 minutes more. 20 minutes more, I don't know if we can finish this. We can watch together. I wrote a lot. We can watch together. Uh, watch it together? 
Yeah, maybe later. What? Huh? We also want to watch the special program. Oh, you didn't watch it? I really? watched it, but no. uh, uh, not enough. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Let's go watch it. After maybe we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah? Yes, Thank you. Twenty minutes is not yeah. enough because no. you will ask questions and I will explain, and if I could even read it. <laughs> And it takes some time, you know. What, what is that? Uh, speak, spoke, spoken. <laughs> yeah, I had written it long ago, you know, and I don't even know if I could read it very well. And I have to think in between and pick a little bit, you know. There's some top secret you should not know. For example, yeah, okay. Maybe we go eat a little bit, watch a program, meanwhile. And we all come back later. Yes. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yes. You're very welcome. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <sighs> voila, voila, voila. I'd be very proud of the third book because I really intended to write it. The other two, uh, just by the way, because we have years of photos and I thought we should do something, and the animal people are okay with it. But this one, I, I decided to do it. Mm -hmm. So I took photos almost every day. Oh, I went wow. into the freezing water and run into the bush sometimes, scratch myself all over because of the thorn in the bushes, you know, just to take some special photos. Because if you lose it next time, it's not the same. Not the same action, yeah? And sometimes you lose it because when you go over there, they fly away or something. Oh, no. next day, next day again. Waiting, waiting. I'm very proud of it. Now, of course, I don't ever write enough, but it would be some basic knowledge for you guys about the wild that you think are wild. They're beautiful beings. Very, very affectionate. Like when I, I feed the swan people, sometimes I don't recognize at a glance which one is which one, you know? You know what I say? Are you shy, shy? He said, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yes. And when he sees me, put the bread down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, waking tail, waking like a dog person. Yes. And the, the dog people, even, you know, before I went with a, with a goof car, and when I turned around, it made beep, beep, beep sound. They knew it already. The whole family came waiting at the shore, waking tail. <laughs> Quack, 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 quack. Oh, just like family members. And the swan person even tried to protect me, like a dog person. But you know all that later. <laughs> yeah, in the book, yeah? yeah. It protects my feelings. They're beautiful beings. Very, very affectionate. Like when I, I feed the swan people, sometimes I don't recognize at a glance which one is which, you know? You know, I say, are you shy, shy? He said, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That means yes. And when he sees me, put the bread down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, waking tail, waking like a dog. Yes. And the, the ducks even, you know? Before I went with a with a golf car, and when I turned around, it made beep 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 sound. They knew it already. The whole family came waiting at the shore, waking tail. Quack 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 quack. Oh, just like family members. And the swan even tried to protect me, like a dog. But you know all that later. <laughs> yeah, in the book. Yeah. He protects my feelings. Yeah. Okay, I might as well tell you. Just one part. <laughs> one time, I, I camped next to where they stayed on the island, small island, I camped on it. And uh, in the morning, one day I heard very loud noise from the birds, the coots and the crested grape or whatever. I went out and have a look and I saw a duck mother because she was very protective of her child. She was almost drowned in a coot, you know? You know, she bit him and harassed him so much. Oh, I was appalled. I said, my God, I can't believe this. I can't believe what you're doing. You see that? I told the swan, you know? The swan <laughs> were next to me. They were on the island with me nearby, next to my tent. You see that? Oh, my God, I couldn't believe it. I was so hurt. I was, it was so painful for me to see that. So, my God, she almost killed her. I think she's killing her. There's nobody there. I'm just telling the swan. 
And you know, Sai, the, the male swan, he left his net. He was just preening himself. And when he heard me, he looked at me and he left the net. He went all the way down, chased the duck away. And then he just came back. He didn't bite him, he just chased that duck away. And then he came back to me and he looked at me. <laughs> yeah. And I said, thank you, but I still feel very hurt. I didn't believe you guys do this to each other. I was <laughs> talking like, I was screaming, I was saying, they hurt my feet. They hurt that good, like he hurts me. I was talking to the swan and he understood it. He left his nest, came to chase very gently, you know. Shoo, 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 uh, out, away out of my sight. And then he returned wow. to his nest with his kids, his children. And he looked at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. You know. <laughs> I scolded her. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. You don't need to be so psychic to understand. Many times they just make me feel so good, so good, you know. I mean, I was very upset, very sad, and he knew that. And he just made me feel, I understand, you know, I do something about it. He did it. Yeah. My God, you must, you must be there to know, because to tell you in words is not really anything. That, that's the best I can do. But you must be there to know, to feel it, to feel what I feel, and to know the communication yeah, between us. He really did something for me. Yeah. And uh, sometimes he chases the duck away, yeah? Uh, or he chases. Mostly he doesn't chase the duck, it's just the geese. The geese are as big as them and have the same food and the same, you know, uh, impressive presence, so he doesn't like it. Especially when he has babies, are very aggressive. Don't ever try to, to do anything or go near when they have babies, okay? I don't guarantee. Very aggressive. But they just know me, so they let me go. Huh? They let me come next to them, like just like this, huh? in the middle of the night. Because I thought they were going to hatch in the morning, so I had to take the photo <laughs> when they came out. So I dragged the tent, you know, in the middle of the night, went next to her nest, and said, I'm going to come tonight, okay? <laughs> and that's it. And I said, mm -hmm. and then okay, I came. <laughs> and they didn't do anything. But one time I took a stick because I saw the mother swan had a stick from the nest, you know, sticking next to her neck. And I used the stick to want to remove that stick out. And she caught him. She caught him back and he flew back from far away, flew back right away. And he came to me, ah, what do you do? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know? I said, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know I'm good for you. I'm good. Huh? I just tried to help. And he calmed down right away. When he heard me, he said, I just wanted to help. He put his you know, all the calm down, you know, not... <laughs> because when he's angry, he makes himself four or five times bigger, and he stretched his neck to the sky and came at me. <laughs> I threw the stick away. I said, no, I just wanted to help. And he calmed down right away. And he went back to the water. He didn't even stand there to watch me go. Now he went back to the water. All things come, you know, <laughs> slim back his body immediately. And he understood everything I said in English. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah. Of course, we don't always need to use language, but we humans, you know, use human language and forgot, you know. I said, I'm good, I'm good. No, you know, I'm good to you, right? I just want to help. And when he heard the word help, he immediately put his things down and just went to the water, minding his own business, went far away. Didn't even stay in here, make sure or anything. No, no. Yeah. And normally, the, uh, if I go with the attendant, you know, with the male attendant, oh, he comes around the boat and he just tries to stop the boat. He just runs in front of the boat, back and forth, back and forth. And if you don't listen, he will come, fly up to the boat and uh, want to attack you because of the, the eggs, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, it's too, too much trouble to go with the boat because he might fly on top of the boat anytime. He's on top of us. He has more advantage, yeah? He did not attack quite yet, but he's very aggressive and it scares you, you know? So I thought I'd build a bridge across, you know, the kind of very primitive bridge. But I can go on it, yeah? Just put some cable and then put some fence on it <laughs> and tie it. That's it. And then I can walk on the fence on top of water and go to the island. But before that, he went around. 
like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you coming from here and all that? I said, no, no, I just want to help you, okay? Listen, I'm just going to build a bridge, a very small bridge, no hindrance to you running around the lake. I'm just wanting to help in case your children need help, because I cannot go by boat to feed your partner and your children when they're born. I want to help you. So he just doesn't do anything. He immediately lets you, and he relax. He runs around, but he doesn't puff himself up, or he doesn't threaten you. He understands everything. So in case you encounter the wow in any way, by chance, and if they threaten you, no? you just tell them, calm, calm now, I, I'm harmless. I'm good, I'm good. Okay? I'm good. And they, they will understand. Explain to them why you are there and what you're doing. They understand everything. But be quick, huh? Not <laughs> <laughs> fast, huh? Wait, tiger. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, tiger. <laughs> Talk fast. Talk yeah. fast. <laughs> okay. But don't just go any in the wild and meet the wild or anything. If you want to feed them, okay, be distant until they know you, until you're sure. Yeah. But you're never sure, okay? It depends on your energy, huh? Yeah. Sometimes if you just have a little aggressive in your head, he knows it. Because one time I was so mad at him, because he shoo all the geese away, you know? When I want to feed them, he shoo them. He owned the whole lake. So <laughs> his name is written all over it. So I said, Shai, you are so bad. You're so bad, so bad. Hmm? I really don't like your manner. You, you have to change it. Yeah? But he didn't listen. Uh, and the next time I scold him again, but he felt very it. sorry. He said sorry. And then he said, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. I said, then just don't do it. And he said, okay, next day he'll do the same again. <laughs> so I was angry. I'm too lazy to talk to him. I said, I'm too lazy to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. Go away. Go away. Eat and go. <laughs> and then I said to my attendant, you know, I said, oh, you know what? I want to catch this guy <laughs> so that others can come and eat easily because he looks like he just monopolized the whole egg and I can't even feed the other geese because he has egg, you know. So he watches the whole lake. Day and night, he doesn't sleep a wink, I'm telling you. Wow. Yes. Only after the kids were born and they grew up a little bit, one time I caught him sleeping. You know how I know it? He snored. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, what did I say? Oh, I was saying to my attendant only, well, I want to catch this guy, and then we can feed every other creature that comes along. Okay, I just said to my attendant, but I didn't do anything. Next day, he saw me. <laughs> <laughs> he came with five times bigger than his body, come to me. <gasps> oh, he snatched the, the bread back from my hand before I even had a chance to open it. <laughs> I said, okay, eat it. <laughs> you know, and I... I, I walk away, and his partner, you know, feeling very ashamed. You know, she 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 took all the children and went away from him. Yeah, it felt bad for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and took all the kids away. <laughs> we didn't fight with him, but show him that she disapproved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't know, you don't know how much she talks to me. This one, the girl, huh? Mm -hmm. The boy understands no language. The girl also, but the inside communication. She can see wow, thousands of years ahead and behind. Oh. Yeah, she tells me who's good, who's not good. <laughs> Whoever comes near, who's not good. Yeah, she tells me a lot of things. Yeah, okay, anyway, go eat. See you later. <laughs> okay. So if you told me you don't like it, then... Uh... You know, you wouldn't have it. I said, I told them 10,000 times already. I even, a couple of times, threw the whole juice outside and wrote a note, orange only. Everything else you take away. I threw it out in the yard. And next day, it came back again in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said to the, the new attendant, I said, I just drink it because otherwise it will be more complicated. <laughs> I don't want... I want peace in the house. I, I even drink poison now if he gives me. I'm just quiet and drink. And I say, yuck, <laughs> I don't like the taste. You know, it's mixed with mango and all stuff. 
I like mango, but I like to eat it, the mango, or drink mango juice alone. I don't like to mix with other kinds. It tastes funny. And I say that. I wrote a note with a heart underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> now I write them letter. I don't write any heart anymore. <laughs> Only when it comes, and I say thank you, and then with the heart. <laughs> no heart before. <laughs> oh my God, I'm telling you. And uh, I like French baguette, and there's one shop that sells good one. And sometimes the bakery is different, it tastes funny. I'm sensitive, I just know the, even just a little different. Okay, I won't die, but I say go to that shop, that's better, you know? And for everybody too, not just for me. No. Always some excuse. I didn't pass by the shop. I didn't have time to do it. always buy something else that I don't like. <laughs> I eat it also, but I feel very neglected, you know? I just want a baguette. <laughs> Not like diamond or anything. <laughs> Lucky he doesn't have a high maintenance master, you know. <laughs> Happy Ching Hai Day. Go ahead, before I blow up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very nice. Merci. What was that? That was from Frédéric Chopin, a little Polonaise he composed when he was seven. Wow. Oh. wow. <laughs> Some genius, huh? Yeah. By the way, you guys feel better this time, huh? I bought a couple more heater and mm -hmm. yeah. yes, too. And the toilet's better, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you guys think about it? Why do you need a brain like mine <laughs> to think of toilets? Just rent a couple more. Is it much better now? Yes. With extra, yeah? Yes. Emergency, they eat a lot like this. <laughs> we'll wait too long. <laughs> How possible? <laughs> Yeah, really, it's better now? Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe we just keep it like this. Uh, what the heck, buying a bigger place, and then I have to take care more. Mm. So really, I'm really tired, you know? We have a lot of people, but everybody just keeps thinking I'm invincible. <laughs> maybe I am, but my body's not, yeah? Every little thing, my God. You have to sense what is right and what's wrong, right? Like the keynote, no? Just hit the right one, don't hit the wrong one. <laughs> and the music is beautiful, no? Huh? Sister, brother, whoever you are. <laughs> or you are the bai, or you are the sister, or you are the brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. Practice so many years and still don't know what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing to do. I'm really frustrated. So I used to with Mama being around, you know. That's why sometimes I don't want to be around so you guys can grow up a little bit, be independent. Yeah, I didn't go back to Mali for a long time. But whenever they see me, that's it. The baby uh, quality comes out again. <laughs> it seems so difficult to live with humans. I told you, this is the afternoon, I said, Dr. Do. <laughs> His name is Dr. Du, Du Little. Yeah. He could talk to the animal people. Yeah. And uh, he said he's like a dog person now. He feels like a dog and behaves almost like a dog, and he cannot talk well like a human. No polished sentences and doesn't talk like a human, and he doesn't get on well with humans. He only gets on well with animals. He's been with animals too long, he said like that. He prefers the animal people. I feel the same. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, really, uh, I'm feeling the swan or the duck people, but sometimes they relax me. I'm so stressed out so much that I just <laughs> go out and jump on a golf cart or walk or whatever, take bread, you know, go to the bridge far away and start feeding them and talk to them. If you were nearby, you would think, Master, crazy, who is she talking to? We don't see anybody around. That's the main point, because nobody around, I like it. <laughs> yeah, human uh, quality, human personality is really very tiring for me to deal with. The ego is the worst enemy of my mission. Mm. They're just so blind, they don't even see it. Don't see what they're doing, you know? And don't consider other people's feelings, because the ego just blocks them. Like, lock inside a room, don't see anything outside, don't know what's going on outside. Yeah, very self-centered, you know? Almost like selfish, you can say. Don't think of anybody else. Don't, don't know anybody's feelings. Just do what he wants or she wants, regardless of what you request. Yeah, I have another attendant, a new one coming. You probably know one of them. Yeah, from last time. Uh, no matter how many people come, she cooks the same. <laughs> like for two people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please laugh as much as you want. This is a true story. <laughs> and I have a witness here. <laughs> the witness is still alive, you know? <laughs> so one time I discovered it. I said, hey, you cook so little, it's enough because we have ten dog people and <laughs> six human beings, you know that? And all the bad people. She said, oh, we still have some from, you know, yesterday a lot, so this should be enough. I said, okay, I believe her. Next day, it's the same. Hey, is still something left from yesterday? Oh no, I think that's enough also. <laughs> and then I didn't think of it much. I thought maybe it's, you know, maybe it's really enough. And because maybe sometimes they don't like 
the the new regime maybe don't like brown rice and sesame, so maybe they eat bread or whatever else, you know, instant noodles, <laughs> favorite, or whatever, yeah? So I didn't say anything. A few days, many days, I saw like that, and she said, oh, it's always enough, it's always enough, fine. But one day I felt a little suspicious, so I asked the other people, say, do you have enough food? No, master, have enough <laughs> <laughs> we had to, <laughs> we were so hungry and we had to eat just anything. I said, why didn't you tell her to cook more? We did, Master, we did many times. <laughs> All of us told her one by one. But every time we, we look, it's the same. There's something wrong with her ears. <laughs> Not really, just square. Last life karma. Last life karma, stingy. Didn't pick people. I didn't want to spend money on anybody. This life does the same stuff. Yeah. I have another one. Well, she's old now. Bless her So It's not like I'm talking bad or anything. I'm just telling you the ego is troublesome. Just blocks you dead. You hear nothing, you see nothing, you feel nothing of anybody else. And those guys are already much better, already less ego, like 10%, for example. Some are even worse, 30%. These people, they go to war all the time. They make war all the time. Like some president you know. <laughs> <laughs> the name I shall not mention, huh? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, some of 40, 50% ego. Oh, you avoid these people. They kill you any time. They don't even blink. Uh, yeah. Because they're so self-centered, selfish, you know? They don't consider anybody important at all. Anybody or anything stands in their way, they cut. That's it. No mercy, no thinking, no blinking, no conscience, nothing. Too much on the negative side. Ego is weighing, is more on the negative. Noble quality is more on the positive. More noble quality, easy to get on with everybody, very pleasant to be with, generous, kind, simple. Yeah? Less NQ, <laughs> a lot of EQ, trouble, trouble. You know what EQ is? Ego. Ego. <laughs> <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> She's been there, joined the club. <laughs> okay, so I'm telling you, ego is the worst enemy, nobody else. No sin, no devil, nobody, just the ego. Ego is the last impression from the karma, yeah? Also from the something that you do in this lifetime. Maybe you're spoiled, your background, or you have a PhD or something, and then you think you're a big shot. Problem, problem. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's another a true story. I, I have a, a resident, you know, and not only she doesn't help to cook on Sunday every time thousands of people come, you know, and not only she doesn't help anything, she's old, you know, she hangs around and she says, enough, that's enough, and she goes, that's enough. And she goes, oh, that's enough. She doesn't let people cook at all. <laughs> Not only she doesn't cook, she stops other people, you know, cooking more, feeding people. That's why I have to always go down and check, you know? But sometimes I can't do it all the time. I'm busy with something. And she always goes for that. That's enough. Go, Lala. Go, Lala. Go, Lala. <laughs> enough already, enough already, enough already. Sometimes people don't have enough food, you know? I was so mad sometimes because I keep telling her and she didn't change. I was so mad because people came a long way. It's inside Taiwan, but you have to travel sometimes six hours to get there, yeah? Because you have to go to the bus station, or you have to go with the Tongxiu, you're waiting, and traffic, you know, if from the other side of Taiwan come to Miaoli, it also takes a long time. Yeah, three, four, six hours, depends on where you live, yeah? Sometimes traffic is not convenient. No car. Have to go to the bus and wait and all that. Yeah, and change to another bus and it takes a long time. Or have to go to a certain area. They have rented the bus and they take it together. And it takes a long time to wait so that all the persons concentrate together and then take the bus. You see, it's a lot of inconvenience for them. With the, you know, all the thorns <laughs> that you're taking with you, and umbrella and tent and meditation tent and sleeping tent, all kinds of stuff. A lot of things, yeah? And cannot always drive the car up the hill, have to park the car somewhere. 
they park it all the way, you know, one, two kilometers <laughs> away from, from the ashram, all the way up, parking, no, no, no space. And inside we ran a lot of places for them to park already, still not enough space that you could always go up, put all your things out. And they're hungry and tired, eh? And I want them to have a good meal. They come to my home, why not? Yeah? Always, enough, that's enough, that's enough. And sometimes they really go hungry, you know? So I was so mad, I told her to go home. Go home and tell whoever is at home that it's enough. <laughs> not here in my house. <laughs> I'm telling you, some people are so funny. Now we can laugh about it, but I was very frustrated, you know, and angry at that time. No. Because a lot of people were not fed, and that is not the way it should be when they come to my house, yeah? It's not necessary to do that. No? Is it? No. no. Yeah, we went early in the morning, we loaded many trucks of food, we brought it home specially for, for them. Why let it rot? for a few more days in the storage and not cook it for people. See what I mean? If we don't have enough food or we forgot or could not buy, okay, fine, but we have a lot of food. What for keep it there? Huh? Tell me. Okay. You have another song? Yes. What kind? Johann Sebastian Bach Preludium. Wow, I love that. That's my favorite. See <laughs> some more light. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Magic music. They're not just simple music, they're magic. Yeah? I really make you go somewhere else, huh? Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm. You have anything else? There's a violin. Violin? violin. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Please <laughs> give us some fun. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So that's uh, our Qinghai Day program, huh? Yeah. At least we have some reserve, huh? <laughs> You can uh, accompany him or not? No? Is no, that okay? I don't have the score. Different one, huh? Okay. This is a good one, even though it's so small, but it sounds so real. Yeah. It's cool. Mm -hmm. How long did you have to practice for this magic music? Um, not long. Not long? You've been used to it? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So cool. Are you a real musician or just a hobby? 
No, I'm a musician. No wonder, my God. Oh, we are very honored to have a real musician playing real music. <laughs> <laughs> are you also a real musician? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> 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 I don't know what the thoughts are. <laughs> oh, this lovely. Can't we just stay here and play violin every day? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else will pay for a thousand euros. <laughs>
Mm. What's so difficult for being romantic, yeah, or kind, or considerate, or simple? How difficult it is to be simple, huh? How come? Where are you playing? Tell me your life. Tell me some <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> I live in Munich, Munich yeah. Center, yeah. and I teach and give little concerts. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you look very happy. <laughs> Do it when you want. Yeah, I wish I could be like you. <laughs> Just have the Yamaha, that's it, nobody else. I'm a student in London. Yeah? Yes, I study, actually I have done violin degree in Switzerland. In yes. Switzerland, I yeah. went to Berlin in Switzerland, and now yeah. I do opera singing in in London. Opera singer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you feel inspired? I just can't. I mean, I, I prepared nothing. It's, it's oh, I understand. Yeah. He wants to give a quality uh, yeah. performance. Yeah. Next time. Not on demand. Okay, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they need quality time and, you know, prepared and inspiration. Not sitting like this, you know. give me some. <laughs> I don't blame you, brother, we don't deserve it. <laughs> okay, how well? Anybody else wants to show off your talent? No? That's good. Okay, at least you know you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Your ego won't come up then. <laughs> is the orange funny or is me? It tastes a little bit. Yeah, it tastes a little bit funny. Maybe it's me. <laughs> no, no, it's bitter. Should I get another one? No, no, no. I'm just drinking it to cool my temper. <laughs> Not really enjoying it. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> one time I went on retreat, remember? I drink only one glass of orange juice every day. And it tastes like heaven. And now I could drink as much as I want. <laughs> it tastes like... You know. <laughs> I don't want to tell. <laughs> you want to play more? Uh, I have a little menuet from Mozart. Okay, let's have him. He was a child. Yeah, uh, beautiful. Little Mozart, eh? Yeah. yeah. I love Mozart too. I have to find him. Yeah, don't worry. He'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Some idiot told him to 
make less notes. <laughs> Not so many notes. <laughs> Take some notes away. Too many notes. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I'd rather play music to the cows and to those kinds of people. <laughs> they take some notes away. And it's not Mozart anymore. It will come as na 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 Some people are funny, huh? Luckily if you don't have me. You want to play some more for us? Can you? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Professional. <laughs> the violin is good for your soul. <laughs> I can see you love that violin very much. I see the trace of your... Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your, uh, how's that? Your chin on there. <laughs> I play some uh, popular Jewish music, yeah? Hmm, yes, why not?
Sim, eu te esgoto, eu te esgoto. Ai, é melhor. Eu venho a casa, não vou ir a ser. So nice music, huh? I don't always have live music like this, you know, at home. I light a little fire and then I just put the iPod on. <laughs> Chopin. <laughs> iPod, Chopin, iPod. <laughs> Chopin on the go. <laughs> Pocket Beethoven. <laughs> and it's still nice, yeah? yeah. A small iPod with a little loudspeaker, you know? You flap it up with a book, like that. Mm. Yeah. And I light my little fire in my little corner, you know, <laughs> with a couple of dogs laying around. <laughs> I lay it around. Sometimes I eat some popcorn. <laughs> I listen to the music. I don't have life like this. Life is much nicer. Huh? What's wrong? You need some? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why? Because I like listening to Oh, yeah? Why well, doesn't take much to make me happy? It takes a lot to make me mad. <laughs> Guys, it's New Ching Hai Day. Please eat some more cakes. <laughs> yeah, okay? And tomorrow we really meditate, okay? <laughs> so go ahead. One side here, one side there. And some outside people, no? Oh, you have just changed, right? Okay, okay. You just changed? No, you haven't. The same guys sit here. No change, huh? Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Real musician. <laughs> Wonderful. You really look like musicians. I don't know how musicians should look, but they really look like <laughs> You know, I think kind of sweetness about them, you know? A kind of innocent childhood, you know, a kind of innocent purity about musicians. I mean, the real one, huh? Not the iPod one like me. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm ruined, you know, guys, dealing with so many people. I think I'm ruined. Sometimes I feel sorry for a little kid in me. Another time I feel sorry for the poet in me. And another time I feel sorry for the musician in me, the, the would-be musician in me. <laughs> Remember my father didn't want me to study music when I was young? Yeah, yeah. back in, no one I don't know. But I, I learned it on the slide, you know? Yeah, I learned it alone. Otherwise, well, I would have probably been like you, giving concerts and all that, instead of sitting here talking. <laughs> hey, there's some more here, baby. Hey, for, for outside, if we have enough in here, some for outside. Yeah. Is there any like stories nearby? No. These two near the people that I have. What is it, baby? What do you want to do? Oh, just to help. Take one basket to put it outside. Oh, you need that to do it? Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah it's always good to be cautious, huh? If people get sick, they blame you, no. <laughs> okay, guys? Everything okay now? That's for outside. Yeah. You have enough here? The musician doesn't have We didn't get any. And the cameraman. Thank you. <laughs> why do you give them such things? <laughs> why, why not take? Oh, sorry. I Can thought there was a big one. <laughs> yeah? Let them choose what they want. Right. They're musicians. <laughs> <laughs> you just listen to their music for free, man. <laughs> Don't show any appreciation. <laughs> The cameraman doesn't have any. You want some? Just them? Give them so much, then. Well, then just leave it there. I don't have to follow people. So, the more the better, you know? Just worry we don't have enough. Yeah, okay. Where's your guy? Yeah. <laughs> He's our guy. Uh -huh. 
younger than Kurt when I first saw you or uh, your picture. <laughs> you happy then? Yeah. Funny how last time you know like that uh, Ronald came here and he just in the corner so quiet. I thought he didn't like it. <laughs> Did he say he liked it? Yeah. yeah. When no one boasted about it, right? <laughs> but when he came here, he just sat in the corner and stared at me. He said, well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with this guy? He said, oh, it just feels strange because one year I just sit in front of a computer and suddenly saw so many people. <laughs> Normally I only see people on the computer, you know, and now he see the real one, he didn't know what to do like it. <laughs> He's looking for the people in the computer instead, so he keeps staring around. <laughs> okay. And what did he say to me? And he said, oh, uh, when the people came to him and say, you must go to Paris. He was so scared, he thought they kick him out. <laughs> so he loves to work there. Yeah. I'm glad, eh? Yeah? I'm glad that some people love, love it there. Mm. Mm. You? You do her? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now, where else would you go anyway? <laughs> oh. Where else are you go? Out of this world. <laughs> or the next. Yeah? We can't get yeah. Okay. I tell you a story. There was a master. It's a true story in India somewhere. A long time ago. There was a master one day. We want to protect all of his so-called intimate disciples, the close disciples, out of town. And because the night before, everybody was having a festival or something, and in the happiness of Qinghai Day, you know, everybody <laughs> confessed that, Master, I love you, I follow you forever, I die for you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so the next day, he took the whole Love you, Master. <laughs> I went to a brothel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he went up there, and the chief prostitute saw him, knew that he's a holy man. You know, she knew now and said, Oh, Master, it's my honor that you come to my place. Uh, please tell me what I can do for you and your uh, holy disciples. <laughs> I don't think they are very holy, maybe they're not. Okay. And then uh, the master said, oh, I just need to spend one night here in your place. He says, oh, that will be done, master. Anything else? And also you bring me a plate of vegetables, but cover it. Don't let people see what's in there. I want to eat, but cover Vegetarian food, but cover it. And bring me a bottle with uh, syrup. But syrup with color that looks like wine. So a uh, wine bottle but with syrup. And then a uh, plate of vegetables, all kinds. Vegetarian dish, cover it. The moment they enter, the whole town already talk. Oh, isn't that <laughs> Maharaji so and so? <laughs> oh, look at what he's doing with his Maharaj disciples <laughs> in this kind of Maharaj place. <laughs> They all talk, talk, talk a lot, and all the disciples already felt very, very dishonored. And they were just standing there, you know, standing, talking, didn't know what to do. And the master went upstairs to the chief, chief of the prostitute's place, and she was just standing by, and he said, now, kindly lend me your bed for tonight, and you go sleep downstairs, somewhere else. She said, yes, master, no problem. She left. And then he ate his vegetables, <laughs> he drank his orange juice, <laughs> and then he went to bed to sleep. The next morning, when he woke up, he came down. All the disciples had left, <laughs> except one. <laughs> and he said, hmm? Where is everybody else? <laughs> they love you to death, Master. Disciples, where is everybody else? The only one and only leftover disciples, say, they all left the moment you enter the prostitute's room, Master. <laughs> they all left already. He <laughs> say, but why? He say, well, the whole town talks about them, about you and about them, like you have a bottle of wine and you cover the meat plate, otherwise why should you cover it? <laughs> yeah, because if it's vegetarian, why is to cover it so secretly? And you have a bottle of wine even, and you go to the room of the prostitute. <laughs> So they think, 
something's wrong with you. <laughs> I think you must have fallen, and so they all left you already, Master. I'm so sorry. Uh, anything I can do for you. <laughs> I'm the only one. So Master said, then why are you not with them? Why are you still here? So he said, Master, I would have left with them, but I wouldn't know where to go. He said, why is that? He said, everywhere I go, you would be there anyway. <laughs> that means he sees the Master everywhere. So what's the use of running away from him? So then he chose this one to be his successor, of course, afterward, eh? But I think he tested them too hard, no? <laughs> even for me, I wouldn't even go there. <laughs> I would be one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make, make him do an ashram after the, the bad ones all gone, huh? And turn them all into disciples, no? Mm. Anyway. And there's another testing story that I think I told you already. Huh? About the master who wants to test his gun. No. No? No? Okay, in case I did, you pretend you do not know him. Oh, one day. Actually, one of the Sikh gurus, yeah? I think this guru, Gobind Singh, but I was, I'm not sure anymore. This guru, he loves swords. He loves guns and all that stuff. Men's toys. <laughs> At that time, they had to fight a lot with Muslims because they also I mean, had different gods. <laughs> the Muslims profess that their God is better than his God. <laughs> And the Sikh thinks he's gotten better than the Muslims, or vice versa, who knows what. So they are harassing each other. Not really, I think the Muslims were in power, the government. So they give them a lot of hard time. So he needed guns and horse people and fighting men. At that time, it was a bloody time for the Sikh disciples and the masters. And they killed the whole family later on, you know, terrible. But one day, some of uh, his disciples bought him a new gun. At that time, I think they just invented guns. And this is a good gun with no backfire. So he said he wanted to test it. So he said to one of his attendants, the so-called most loyal and always professed master, you are the best, uh, I follow you forever, blah, blah, blah. So I said, OK, um, uh, forget his name. Just say Laila, whatever, yeah? I want to test my new gun, but I need a target. Could you please stand there and <laughs> I see if it's really as good as they have advertised. <laughs> if it's really worth the money that my disciple has spent. So Laila said, oh, Master, I would die for you, but I have children, you know? <laughs> And my wife would kill me if I <laughs> if I die <laughs> if I die right now. <laughs> she would kill me. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> if I die, she would kill me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then the master said, "Okay, never mind. I understand. You go into my uh, horse style, yeah." and ask my servicemen, any of them, to come here so I can use him as a target to test. So Laila went to the horse people stable and uh, conveyed the guru's message. Oh, they all, five, six of them, all running, running, came to the master. One was still combing his hair, the other one was still tying the turban, the other was still tying the shoes. I, we are here, master, I am here, I am here. And the master said again that he wanted to have a target to test his gun. So uh, all of them competed with each other to be the target. Uh, they all told the, the guru that, oh, this guy is very good for the horses. He must be alive to take care of the horse people. <laughs> and the other one said, no, no, that guy is better. He specializes in horse nutrition. Without him, the horse people will die. I am better to die you know, and better to be the target. So one after another, they competed with each other to die. <laughs> so. Finally, the master said, OK, I pick one of you. They pushed back and forth, so I said, OK, this one, go. And then he immediately went out and stood there, smiling. So the guru just shot one time, right at him, but above his head. <laughs> and then he didn't die anyway. 
So he said, oh, I was just testing you guys. Why would I want to kill you? <laughs> and Lila, the most faithful attendant, was very ashamed. <laughs> and he said, oh, if, if only I'd known the guru only wanted to test my face, I would have stood there. <laughs> Can you believe it? Shameless. <laughs> These are the stories from the old time, eh? But it's still very modern. A lot of people say they love me, but when I want them to do something, they don't do it. Yeah, Not even for me, you know? Like even work for Supreme Master TV or something? Uh, I would have, but <laughs> however, you know, perhaps, <laughs> uh, maybe, blah, blah, blah. I feel really sorry for these people. I don't really need them. Just give them a chance, really, a chance to advance quickly, because I thought that's what they want. Everybody is also, Master, how can I advance quickly? How can I be a good disciple? What can I do for you apart from meditation? <laughs> Please let me know. <laughs> and when, when they know, <laughs> they have all kinds of excuses. Because maybe outside is more attractive, yeah? Or earn more money, or the girlfriend doesn't want him to go, or the husband uh, is he so loving, you know? <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> Yeah, this is the problem of this war. You know, when we are here, I told you already, it's very difficult for you to get away from it, yeah? scot free. It's not easy. Hmm? Not easy at all. I don't blame you at all. Just uh, don't tell me all these big <laughs> stories <laughs> about how you die for me and all that. I don't need anybody to die for me. I need you to leave, yeah? So that you can meditate more, yeah? so that your level will be higher when you really die. Mm. Don't ask to die too early. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven is full of those people <laughs> who die early and useless. <laughs> ah, okay, I want to tell you something about... You want to read a poem? Mm -hmm. I'm not a very good reciter. Maybe somebody would? Anybody who knows how to recite poetry in English? I don't think you can recite much in English, right? No? You can maybe recite in Vietnamese, but not in English, right? You can just read it, right? Uh, yeah, it's just reading. What I, I it's mean? It's not like Vietnamese. No, huh? Okay. I am trying. <laughs> <laughs> how about we put Vietnamese accent into it? Like? <laughs> It'd be funny, huh? You that worry. <laughs> I don't think it goes. Yeah? yeah. yeah. <sighs> this is a poem of Rumi, yeah? Remember Egypt is the title. Remember Egypt? Mm, no? <laughs> you don't remember the Egypt story? The slaves? Moses? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You that worry with travel plans, read again the place in the Quran where Moses is taking the Jewish nation out of slavery. You so frantic to have more money, recall. You know, if you worry about money so much, just try to remember this. That's what he means. Recall what? What they have abandoned to wander in the wilderness you who feel hurt, remember the pavilions and houses left behind you that lead the community through difficulties. Read about the abundant fountains they walked away from to have freedom. Because it's a poem, so they cut it in some unusual places. And normally you would say, <laughs> you know, about the abundant fountains they walk away from to have freedom. Yeah, but they cut it to make it more rhythm cook, I think. Okay. You who dress in clothes that appear to have elegant meaning, you with so much charm remember how your face will decay to dirt. You with lots of property. They left their gardens and their quietly running streams. He means the Jewish slaves at that time. Yeah, they had to leave everything to run away from Egypt, following Moses to freedom. 
so they left everything behind. <laughs> you who dress in clothes that appear to have elegant meaning, you with so much charm, remember how your face will decay to dirt. You with lots of property, they left their gardens and their quietly running streams. It means the Jewish slaves at that time, yeah? They had to leave everything to run away from Egypt, following Moses to freedom. So they left everything behind. You who smile at funerals going by, you that love language, measure wind in stanzas and recall the exodus, the wandering 40-year sacrifice. Measure wind or wind. Maybe wind, huh? because sacrifice, no? Must be wine. Any glasses? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> if you can read, just say can't. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> huh? Maybe wind, because it said language before. Uh huh. Like, you know, sometimes when people talk a lot, then they're windy. Yeah, long winded, huh? long winded sentences. It could be that. But I was suspicious because funeral going by, so I thought it's wine, and then exodus, and then sacrifice. I would do that, but <laughs> I probably cannot always have it, huh? Okay. So you got it, huh? Yeah. So much for me reciting poetry. He means that whoever worries so much about what am I going to do, where am I going to go, or whether I take the airplane or what, and why shouldn't I go to such and such a place, enjoy and all that, huh? Yeah. Worry so much. He says, you go and read again the place in the Quran, you know, where Moses is taking the Jewish nation out of slavery. And they had to leave behind everything yeah, that they had built all that time. During the time they were in Egypt, yeah, they probably built nice houses, made little fountains, quietly running streams. That's why he explained everything. They had to leave everything behind. He says, if you frantic to have more money, recall what they abandoned to wander in the wilderness. You who feel hurt, remember the pavilions and houses, right? Mm. It's very clear, huh? What he probably meant is that it's all dirt anyway. <laughs> Yeah, whatever we lose today or yesterday is nothing compared to the Jews when they had to lose everything to run away for freedom. And they almost really barely made it, you know? They could barely make it, and they almost got caught back, yeah? Because suddenly the king or whoever was in authority at that time felt sorry to let them free. And then they ran after them, but they were already on the other shore. Yeah, remember the, the sea that parted? Yeah. Luckily, they still had their lives, eh? But what for anyway? You know, they could forsake everything. This is an interesting story. Yeah, you know the story, right? They follow Moses to gain their physical freedom because they were slaves in Egypt, yeah? The whole nation of slaves there. And so the king promised that after they built such and such or something like that, he will let them be free. And he had to keep his promise, so he let them all free, with Moses going, running away with them. But the king somehow felt sorry, or somebody talked bad, and then he wanted them back. So all the horse people and the king's men were chasing after them. So this is very interesting. The whole nation follow one man. For what? Do you think they had faith in Moses? Perhaps they did. Perhaps that's why they say, you know, master this, master that, wise man this, wise man that. We follow you. Fine. Okay, they could forsake their gardens, beautiful gardens that they have built all this time <laughs> under slavery. They could forsake beautiful, you know, uh, streams and uh, winding roads that they have built. They probably have amassed some 
property there, you know? Even though they were slaves, they were living near the king's palace, they had everything so that the king could make use of them also. And they had to leave everything behind, what they had built all this time, even though they were slaves, but they had houses, yeah? And gardens and a lot of stuff, maybe some goat and camel people, or whatever. And they could leave all that behind to run for freedom. But when they got freedom, they forgot. Remember? Yeah. So Moses told them to keep the commandments. They didn't. Once he turned his back, went to the mountain to have a retreat day, made Mary <laughs> make in trouble, and worship a carved statue instead. Yeah. So now, do you understand me? Yes. Do you understand the ego? Yeah. They could forsake the the treasure properties, but they could not forsake the ego. Yeah. They did the opposite of what the master demanded and what they they knew was right. They still did the opposite. Yeah? It's easier. It's easier, of course, to worship a calf, or even a calf statue, not even a live one. He could move a few words for you. <laughs> a statue of a golden calf. Can you believe that? Hmm? They had been with Moses all this time. He had let them out of Egypt for freedom. And look at what they did. Yeah? So the freedom of the physical doesn't guarantee anything, does it? And the fact that you leave all your property behind and come to live with a master or something, that doesn't even guarantee anything, does it? It might look good. It might feel like, oh, you have renounced something, but it might not guarantee anything. I have discovered many people, not many, but some people who left properties and families behind, but take the ego with them puts in his pocket, ties it around his waist, sleeps with it, eats with it, walks with it, meditates with it, <laughs> you know? And I could not make use much of these kinds of people. I could not shape them that much as I wanted, yeah? They are not empty. They are not like a canvas that you could paint something on it. They're full of stuff already, all kinds of paint, everything throw on it already. You can't make much out of that anymore. So. Rumi, he's very wise. Even he say that maybe in this uh, poem, maybe he tried to teach us the spirit of renunciation. Yeah, like okay, don't cling too much to our properties. Yeah, look at the story of Egypt. Look at the Jews, the, what they had to leave behind for freedom. Yeah, he means likewise. We should forsake the body for the spirit. You know, like okay, don't cling too much to the material things. Because uh, even, you know, just look at those people, you know, follow their example. But I don't think they are much of an example to follow either. It's easier to forsake material belongings than to forsake the ego, no? That's why, that's why the Jews who follow Moses went through danger with him, trusting him completely, for so everything behind to go with him, still could not leave the ego. That's why they rather worship the golden cup in the master's absence. Why? They know it's just a cup and it's just a statue, but it's easier. The golden cup doesn't talk back, <laughs> doesn't lecture them anything, doesn't give them any commandments to keep, doesn't tell them to meditate two and a half hours and be vegan. <laughs> doesn't tell them to go to group meditation, etc., etc. The statue said nothing. All you do is just go bow to it or just touch it and then get out feeling that, okay, you have done something. See what I mean? Yeah. You see why the people in the world would rather go to some brick temple than go inward. It's easier. Yeah. It's like a walk in the garden. It's a change from your stuffy house. <laughs> Let's go into some holy place, do something. It's easier than to go inward. Yeah? So it's easier to worship a cup or a statue than to follow the real teaching of a master. You see that? Yes. They can leave everything behind, but they're not the real spiritual seekers. 
it's easier to go through some danger, some excitement of danger, né? some risky situation to pump your adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not easy to sit quiet, you know, calm everything down and find out what is it that you want in life and what is it that is wanting anything in life at all. Who is the thing that wants anything? A very nice poem. I like it very much. What do you say? Cool. Do you make music out of it? <laughs> so you like the poem, yeah? Yes. He means even if you dress in beautiful clothes and feel elegant in it, remember they are dirt, you know. He said, remember, your face will turn into dirt one day. This is a very true thing, yeah. But these things people can forsake. You understand? Even material things, some people can do it, yeah. But to forsake the ego, wow. I have found with all these years of being with people, oh, that's the most difficult thing everybody would ever do, if they can do it or not, you know? But I found out that people who live with me for a while, and I reprimand them, it does help to cut down their ego. And every time I point out their wrongdoing, They do cut down somehow, but it takes so long. A very tiresome journey, you know, like a crawling centipede. <laughs> a lot of legs, but goes nowhere. So whatever we do, don't feel too proud of it, because if you feel proud, that means it's the ego who feels proud. Who are we to feel any pride? We don't even have a body. We are spirit. What for we feel proud about a few little exercise things we do in this world? Huh? We came with nothing, we go with nothing. Whatever we do doesn't really help anything too much in this world. What is it to feel proud about? Huh? Except attaining real spiritual knowledge, nothing else we should feel proud about. And even when we attain the real spiritual knowledge, then we don't feel proud at all anymore, right? Then we don't have any ego to feel proud. So this is a good poem about renunciation. But I don't think that's all there is to it, yeah? Because if he remembers Egypt and the end of the story, is different, right? People can forsake everything, but not their own ego. Mm. Okay, any questions? Yes? If there's, say, a place or a country where the suffering level is pretty miserable? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then someone wanted to maybe go there to help out as uh, it were there, but knowing that it, the, the time could also be used in spiritual practice or something, but they're not doing it out of pride. I mean, there's kind of a balance or something there between the spiritual attainment and the relief of suffering. Is that clear now? I didn't get the last <laughs> conclusion. So It's the guy awesome. goes to a suffering place intending right. to help spread the teaching or helping something, yeah. uh, physical suffering to elev yeah, that alleviate. One. Okay. Yeah. There's physical suffering? Yeah, to do that, but um, that would be a use of time other than, like, say, intensive meditation or something. Oh, you mean, would it be better than just staying at home and meditating instead of going and helping the suffering people? Uh, sort of, yeah. Oh, okay. And to do it without the sense of getting pride from it? No, it's not the pride. You know, if you really feel people suffer and you want to help them and don't feel proud about it, then it's okay. You can do both. You can help them and meditate at the same time. After all, how many hours can you sit per day <laughs> doing nothing? <laughs> if you can sit all day or night, then just stay home and do it. But if you can, then do something and meditate also, eh? Help the world also, eh? Okay? okay. Thanks for all right, I got Thanks. you. Mm. Anything else? So everybody else doesn't ask questions? Sister? You were talking earlier, Master, about um, children being born to disciples or freed spirits. Free disciples. Free, free disciples. What about adopted children? They will also be free. They will. Yeah. But you have Not to, at birth. You, you have to trim them then. You understand? You have to trim them? Trim them. Trim them. They have to go your way. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Trim the karma. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Tame the wild spirit, yes. Even if adopted children 
you know, maybe not born from your blood, but they must have had affinity with you in order for both of you to feel good to, to connect with each other or to take him home and care for him the whole lifetime, you know? And for him to also love to be with you and to come with you, accept you. Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Master. Just like I said, I borrow this body to come down, huh? But even then, I must also have that affinity with my physical parents in the past life. They were my employees in the past life. Yeah. At least that. <laughs> Otherwise, I could not come down. Yeah. You know, it's not easy to find some affinity to get a connection and then to come to this world, even for a master. You understand? You could come and go, come and go, but to come to stay a lifetime, you need something more concrete. Yeah? Just like a boat is so free, it needs a heavy, it needs an anchor if you want to stay somewhere. In the Buddhist Sutra, uh, the Buddha explains that to be able to have a human body is so difficult. Like a blind turtle person, you know, he stays at the bottom of the sea. And only once in every 500 years, he will come up to the surface uh, of the, the water, yeah, the water surface. And at that time, there must be a, a wood plank, you know, just floating around and has a hole in it. And then the turtle at that moment must go right into the hole of the wood plank. That's how difficult it is <laughs> to get a human body. You understand me? To be born as a human. That's why many souls mm, reincarnate as animal people. They can also do work with it, yeah? It's just not as easy as us. See, we are more equipped. We are more endowed. Yeah. That's why I told you animal and us, you know, and humans, similar. Come. In that case, if, say, a cow has 40% MQ and some humans have 2 to 10%, isn't it? But, I mean, I don't want to... Not fair, judgment. right? But, but what I'm saying is, wouldn't mm. it be more noble to be bo reborn as a cow than a human being? No, it, it probably is, but then you don't have much chance to be more noble. You have earned a human body in some different cases. You see what I mean? The cow may be more noble, but he has his own job to do. You're human, you can meet a master, you can practice. That human might have been a tree in a past life. Yeah, due to some grace of some enlightened master, he, he jumped, he leapfrogged into a human life. Normally it takes many lifetimes more, you know, from mineral to tree and then to animals and then to men. It's, it's the normal evolution, yeah? But sometimes uh, some being can leapfrog into a human being without going through this cycle because of master's grace. Master's grace is immense. So depending on which level they're born, when they take the human body on this lifetime, then they may be at low, medium, or high, depending on... And then they, yes, yes, they, they, they yeah. keep, that's a platform, and then they keep going yes, to the Yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. Understand yes. Understand. The thing is, humans have free will. Even if you're born bad, you're born good, you have free will to continue being good, or change into bad, or change from bad to good. That's a good thing about being human. You see what I mean? You have free will. But the problem is, once we are born as a bat, you know, and the karma is so heavy, it, you keep attracting more bad. Uh, bad people will come, bad influence to you, and you just continue to do bad things, so you can't swim out of it. That's the only problem. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you, Master. That's why some humans have less NQ, because they have just jumped from... You know, animal kingdom or tree, even tree. Yeah. If the master happened to lean on it or to take a branch out of it by chance or something, <laughs> take a flower, a fruit out of it, yeah, and the tree would jump into human life, next life, without going through the evolution cycle. Yeah. So you got all this today, huh? Hmm. Oh. Now what? You want to go sleep? <laughs> no, I knew that already. <laughs>
needless to ask. <laughs> Need me to ask you, huh? Oof. Wow, what am I writing about? <laughs> Wow, this heavy stuff, guys. Uh, I think maybe we leave it until tomorrow. If I still stay alive, I tell you. <laughs> Never know, huh? <laughs> live every day like the last day, no? That would be the best, no? <laughs> I wrote so many things. <laughs> I think I'm writing about consciousness. Like, well, people have fifty percent consciousness, but from uh, from zero percent to forty percent consciousness, oh, it's difficult to teach. Né? Mm. No, forty percent. Most human you can teach. Good human, teachable, difficult, but can. From 20% to 30% is tameable animals. Monkey, rabbit, cat, etc. From 10% to 20% is wild and tameable animals. From 0% to 10% vicious animals. Like tigers, lions, poisonous snakes. 0% are under are the hellish beings, devils, the opposite of God the other side of creation. Sand, and stones, and trees have even some 10 to 20 percent of human quality in them. Water has 20 percent to 30 percent. Wow. Wow, huh? No wonder uh, the Indian people, they worship water, they worship trees, because they can see, eh? mm. There's something here. Trees, flowers, and vegetables do not feel pain so much when being cut. But they do feel, you know, anxious, yeah, if we want to cut them. So we protect them also, eh? Mm. Because they don't have the nerves, or pain nerves, you know? But they do have a feeling, yeah, the uh, spirit, maybe, yes. Only good spirits can live on the tree, even. <laughs> the tree even chooses whom to live on him. Even spirits, you know, invisible spirits? Only good spirits can live on the tree. Wow. If a master gazes on a tree or touches it, this will evolve into human form, the next life. However, he won't be too smart. <laughs> well, I can guess, no? <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yes! <laughs> Ghosts can be 20% to lower than 10%. From 20% to 10%, or to lower than 10%. Three of my dog people, the Happy Ben and Goody, know who I am and remember our relationship in the past life. Over half of my bird people know and remember also. Over half, not all of them. Not all of the dogs remember and know. Even Hamid doesn't know, you know, the. <laughs> How do you call that guy? The thief, <laughs> he steals everything to eat. <laughs> and he even steals it from the mouth of some other dog. <laughs> if that guy just yawns, he takes the bone, you know, the vegan bone away. <laughs> or he goes and just chew it with, you know, a bone like this, yeah? And the dog would chew in one end and he comes and hold on to it. Until the dog, the vegan bone easy breaks, you know, it breaks, then he takes it and goes away. <laughs> The guy have just a little whatever he has beaten off. <laughs> he just stay there and wait. He doesn't do anything. He just hold on to it. <laughs> He's so smart, this guy. <laughs> and if that guy who was chewing the bone and the bone has not broken, 
happened to stand up just to try to get rid of Hamid. So he stand up with his bone, and Hamid go with him. <laughs> go wherever he go, walk through him. You know, two heads hold on onto the bone together. <laughs> he won't let go. He never would let go. Even if you beat him up, he won't let go. You scream at him, he won't let go. Nothing make him let go. You spray bottle of water, nothing. He just close his eyes and he keep going with the boat. <laughs> <laughs> to him, food is wonderful. It's his dream come true. He won't let go. <laughs> hmm? Telling you. The stones are the stones because they are in that category. Yeah? So... Suppose a stone has 20% of enlightenment, yeah, uh, is nevertheless not better than a human being who has only 10% enlightenment. Because on the contrary, uh, the human has earned the special privileged merit to be a human. Yeah. So a human is still top 10. Uh, so now, um, the 20% consciousness housed in a human is the same as in a stone, yeah? Same degree, but the first is more precious, the human, yeah? more precious. Even if they house the same quantity of consciousness in them, human is always better. Mm. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I even have an explanation here, <laughs> but too short, so I have to ex to translate it first. <laughs> I write short, you know, simple. Same as if you have the same electric current, yeah, but placed into two different objects, yeah. Like okay, you put into a uh, Yamaha, then it becomes a beautiful piano, and the price will be different. Then when you put the same current into just a pole or just some small lamp or something else. The price will be different, you see? So because the electric current is put into the human being, it's more priceless, it's more precious then. Similar like that. Yeah, let's explain it, makes sense. <laughs> no. What's all the stuff I'm writing? <laughs> <sighs> So the difference is in the outer shell, but it is quite a step upscale in evolution between stone and human. That's what I wrote here. It's written. <laughs> Why do I cross it all out? Oh, I told you already anyway. Oh, I said something like animal, person, and tree can leave frog into human, yeah? But the stone cannot. The stone doesn't have this privilege. Mm. So from stone you have to evolve into tree first, eh? and then into an animal, person. And maybe from a tree you can <laughs> leave frog. <laughs> The consciousness in minerals or stones, etc., will go back to where it came to recycle, not to evolve directly to higher species. When it is disintegrated by nature event, wind, water, etc., it could be aeons. Some consciousness are to be stones, some animal people some plans. Give up with some of my writing. It is not the whole story, you know, just one paragraph, one for the subject at the time, you know, I wrote on different days. The people from the fourth plane can visit the fifth plane, 
but cannot stay. Yeah. The fifth plane can visit the four and stay. Hmm. Uh, okay. Close resemblance to heavenly beings, you know, even even physically, uh, is closer to heaven. Uh, the people who have a closer image to heavenly beings are closer to heaven in quality. Don't be proud about it. Not all of the same races are the same. For example, there's some European people who are fifth level. There's some African people who are fifth level also right now. You understand me? Yeah. There are exceptions, of course, in any race. Jesus was an Egyptian or a Jew? Aramish. What is that? Aramish. God, you scare me. <laughs> For example, hey, and uh, Guru Nanak is Indian. The Buddha is Indian. Lao Tzu is Asian. Zhuang Tzu is Asian. Kong Tzu, Confucius is Asian, etc., etc. You see what I mean? Huh? Master Ching. Master Ching is Asian. <laughs> And she looked like only, <laughs> just her physical body looked like, yeah. That's the only thing. Okay, so now that's what it is. The Indian, they're more desperate, yeah? more receptive to spiritual teaching, hence a lot of Indian masters. Wow. When you're comfy, you don't want to seek anything, no? You're okay, you think you're in heaven on earth already. And so like uh, Australian yeah, or other Asian races, or the black African, for example, they're suffering so much, so also difficult for them to put their full attention to believing God. You know, they're too busy fighting for survival, occupied with survival to remember God. Eh? I don't know why I have found out these things, and I have written it many years ago already long time before I even came here. I don't even remember it. I hardly can read it. I did not even remember that I discovered it. I didn't remember what I wrote here. And I found yesterday some of it, and I thought maybe I'll share it with you. It's just a general guideline. You know, I've seen many Europeans go and warring with each other and killing others, you know, and robbing other people, whereas the Africans don't do it, ever. Have you seen the Africans go and rob Europeans? No. <laughs> Bombing them? No, huh? No, just the contrary. So it's just a general guideline, you know. Mind you, it takes just one crazy guy to make trouble in the world. One stupid president is enough to cause World War and also, for example. Because some people are low consciousness, but they have the merit to be in power. Or because the race of that nation has been bad. So that so-called stupid president or king is allowed to be there. It's also a matter of karma. You see, the king or the president alone cannot cause havoc unless the whole country has been doing some bad things. You capish me? Yeah. Okay. And why do I love the Africans so much? <laughs> <laughs> I love their color. Maybe I love chocolate. <laughs> I think they're so sweet, no? Very humble and very sweet, yeah. And the gorilla people are so cool. They don't harm anybody. And they're so big, but also gentle. You see some films from Jen Kudo? Oh, they're so gentle, gentle. And once they know you, they, it's like family members. They can hug you and kiss you and give you banana. <laughs> yeah, it's some, some very, very touching things. Trees don't have much consciousness, animal people have more consciousness, humans have more consciousness, and each animal person also accordingly have different consciousness. The first three levels of human uh, though they are in human form, their consciousness is equal to heavenly beings of the astral or causal plane, yeah? Sometimes 60 or 70 percent consciousness. These are heavenly beings. Why 60 percent? In which the other 40 is material, goals, or mind, matter. Understand me? Not the pure consciousness. That's why 60 percent. 
so though they are in human form, uh, their consciousness is equal, more or less, to heavenly beings of the astral or causal plane. You know, second, eh? And rightly so, they have just descended from heaven there, from those places. That's why they resemble the look of the heavenly beings upstairs. For astral and causal are not yet free from karma or birth and death. They will retain their levels from where they came, provided they lead a smooth, uneventful and righteous life. Life. The basic five precepts. If they keep them in this human lifetime, when they die, they go back to where they came from, more or less. Yeah? Astral or causal, depends. But they don't um, have liberation from life and death. No? But as the mighty karma casts its spellful web all over the physical cosmos of life, and its power pursues all its beings relentlessly, they will be forced to fall against their better judgment time and again. That makes sense now. Mm. But as the mighty karma casts its spellful web, all over the physical cosmos of life, and its power pursues all its beings relentlessly, they will be forced to fall against their better judgment time and again. And that makes sense now. Mm. Okay, my God. I must have been a doctor in former life. <laughs> And then their level will lower accordingly. Mm. Now, a being coming from third level, however, will be less likely to fall. And if this fall will rise up quickly and escape the net of karma. Wow, I'm very philosophical. The net of karma, the spellful web. <laughs> of the mighty karma. You know, mighty karma casts its spellful web all over the physical cosmos. Ooh, see. <laughs> yeah, really, they're not kidding. <laughs> the one who doesn't need glasses in the dark and they rise crawling like this is still make poem. <laughs> make some, you know, literature out of it for such a lousy thing as karma. It's not even worth it. <laughs> Thus, it is always best that a being reaches at least the level of consciousness to be free, because he then already crossed over the line to the positive side, and the higher power thus looks after them. They are the citizens of the positive and Maya cannot judge them anymore. He lost the grip of that being for good. Wow. Though in the physical realm there are all beings with equal degree of consciousness, human beings are the top. The most godlike image, the cream of physical creation. Ah, oh, I probably mean even if on a plane with all beings, you know, different shapes, but same consciousness, human beings are still the cream of the cream. Yeah? The cream of the physical creation. Again, she's writing some literature, letting people know she's educated. <laughs> <laughs> in the dark, you know, with the flashlight. Such <laughs> a worry about <laughs> poetry, the flow. Yeah. They either reside in second, first heaven, or on physical plane, 
we second level consciousness or first level consciousness, you know, like astro or second level. The Lord of the second plane creates human beings from second plane of consciousness down to the astral level only. They are the original form of a human and possess such uh, qualities from the beginning. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This one comes up there. So hey, then we begin with the Lord of Second Plan, blah, 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 and then, and then they are the original form of a human and possess such qualities from the beginning. They either reside in second, first, you know, or physical plane. Okay, that's it. That's from the second lot of karma who creates humans. Okay, now continue. From then down, means from the second or first or physical plane down, humans that uh, are evolved from the animal kingdom, ah, I see, such as gorilla downward. A smaller animal evolved first to the gorilla to be noble enough and then to become a human. If it's a a normal cycle of uh, of evolution. Yeah? Okay, now. And from gorilla to man, and then Bigfoot is the next step upward from gorilla. That's how it goes, yeah? Mm. Gorilla, Bigfoot, man. Yeah? And from then on, it takes thousands of years to evolve and catch up with real human beings from astral to causal. Yeah. Uh, so the real human beings are made from second level, yeah? From the Lord of the second plane. And remember they say they reside in the first, second, or the physical plane, yeah? And the ones who evolve from animals are different then. And later they will catch up in the evolution and come up and become also human. And like all humans, if willing and yearning, we meet a perfect master. It's all the same. Hmm? Once you become a human, you, you can meet a perfect master and be free from the negative sphere. Step upward to fifth plane even. These animals and trees, if blessed by a perfect master of the fifth plane, can live frog into human standard, though less intelligent. Yeah, told you already. Be that. Mm, I don't know why I said be that. I may be being or something. That if they make some virtuous deed to the master or offer of some kind, however insignificant, such as a branch for his use and the master's use, though they still retain some trace of their previous existence, nevertheless, they are already in the human domain and have a chance to speed up their spiritual progress if desired. I have to look into the camera once in a while, otherwise I think <laughs> I'll, see my, I'll see my forehead. Who is that reading? <laughs> Without a master, even the heavenly beings of second plane or humans of second level of consciousness who are made by the Lord here himself still can fall and transmigrate again in a lower state of existence. Because such is the restriction of karmic law in the heavenly world of causal down to the physical and hellish ones below. There are, of course, physical beings who possess heavenly consciousness and others of hellish quality depends on how they use their free will and judgment. Looks like I'm studying with you. <laughs> When I'm in a meditative state, I wrote, but I don't necessarily remember details. Hmm. There are moral standards that dictate physical beings and karmic force to cause obstruction in their choices. They are mostly helpless, lost in the vast sea of transmigration. 
Hence, the second plane, causal plane, is the plane where the creative, sustaining, and destroying power all reside and are the same. Yeah, equally powerful. Yeah. Three, the creative, sustaining, and destroying power all reside and have an equal foothold on the second plane. There is always a recycling wheel going on <laughs> in our domains. <laughs> like if we are objects, <laughs> recycling wheel, we are throwing there, and we are recycled, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> in the second plane, they also do green stuff. Eh? <laughs> you should call it green planet, no? Recycle. Mm. Fancy that, huh? They are all in, no? <laughs> From heaven on already. <laughs> so mostly people call this heaven, no? You know, the astral and the second, that's heaven. In all domains, this recycling wheel is going on in all domains until one is blessed with a master's presence who mercifully takes him under his protective grace and lifts him up high. But not without a mighty struggle with the Lord of Karma who doesn't want to lose his citizen. Thus, it goes also, the speed of spiritual progress depends on where one stands, at which level of consciousness, how far one has fallen, how high one has evolved, how much one longs for liberation. And of course, hey, still have? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, most important, the powerful grace of a master. Depends on that too, huh? The recycling wheel is going on in all domains until one is blessed with a master's presence, who mercifully takes him under his protective grace and lifts him up high. But not without a mighty struggle with the Lord of Karma, who doesn't want to lose his citizen. Thus, it goes also, the speed of spiritual progress depends on where one stands, at which level of consciousness, how far one has fallen, how high one has evolved, how much one longs for liberation. And of course, hey, still have. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, most important, the powerful grace of a master. It depends on that too, huh? A master of high degree, like Babaji, for example, who is willing to remain in the lower realm of astral domain to assist other masters in salvation work, is a great being. Even though he's in the astral plane, he's a great being. He's from fifth level, super fifth, not normal fifth, ne? Super fifth, the highest fifth level. Okay, I, just for your information, I didn't write it down here. In salvation work, is a great being who forsakes the indescribable bliss of the fifth plane, uh, uh, praised and admired by all who know this great sacrifice. Ah, I also praise him. He can be in the physical and astral realm at will, depends on what needs to be accomplished at that moment. Yeah. If you have read uh, the uh, autobiography of Yoganda, you would think he's a physical being, mm -hmm. but he resides in the astral. And as I have told you, even if he's a real astral being, he still can manifest into the physical body for a while, yeah? Just to hang around or to do something in the physical realm, yeah? Hence, uh, the people who met him at that time thought that he was a, a long, long living master, yeah? He lives in the physical and in the astral, yeah? That's also correct. But mostly in the astral, it's easier for him to work from there. He only manifests into the physical plane sometimes. 
at will, eh? because it's his job to do that, because he's powerful. Remember, in the Buddhist Sutra, there's also a story about uh, um, how the earth store Bodhisattva, the Tang Hung Bodhisattva. Yeah. He himself resides in hell so that he can rescue hellish beings, you know? The people who fall into hell, he will rescue them, perhaps teaching them yeah, to pray and all that, maybe do some warning method in hell. <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> but probably they try. Yeah. Over there, we don't need all this flashlight anyway, because a lot is always bright. Huh? The cameraman won't have to sit there, just let, the <laughs> <laughs> just let the camera roll, and we don't need electricity, no? So again, it's a green hell. <laughs> no, no pollution. Huh? <laughs> okay, so what now? A rare and special being, means Babaji, yeah, with extraordinary assignment. Blessed are those who have the privilege of just a glimpse of this great being. There are seventy, seventy, seven zero, such graceful ones, blessing the welfare of this planet and making sure that all beings deserve a fair chance to go back to their heavenly home. Yeah, leading the soul, helping, easing, yeah? Invisibly or visibly, yes. Wow, is that, that's also nice literature here, no? <laughs> Written in the dark, yeah? They are affectionately known as the White Brotherhood, the Silent Ones, you know? The white brotherhood or the silent ones in the physical realm. If you remember the story of Jesus when after he was crucified, there were some angels, you know, white in white gap, some beings in white gap took him into a cave and healed him or took care of him. Remember? These are the white brotherhood from the astral plane and physical, astral and physical. They live on the crest hole. You see, they don't live, they don't die. They're not physical, they're not astral. They're up and down, up and down all the time. Like you live in the border, you know, like between France and Switzerland, there's no border border, yeah? So one time I lived in Switzerland, they told me, you just walk across this little lane, then you are in France. And walk back, you are in Switzerland. You always go abroad. <laughs> it's truly like that. Huh? When we were in Geneva or somewhere, huh? Geneva or somewhere, I remember that. We stay in a house with a sister or brother, and they say, there, the lane is just this big, you know? You walk across, that's France, you walk back in Switzerland. Similar to these silent ones, they live at the threshold of the astral and physical planes, and they have mighty power. They have chosen to be there, not that they are astral beings. But these titles can never denote a fraction of their might and greatness. We call them the silent ones, yeah, the silent bodhisattvas or the white brotherhood. But these titles can never denote a fraction of their might and greatness. That's what I wrote. <laughs> it's written. <laughs> Any beings, and this is another note, okay? I cross already. Any beings from adjoining planes of consciousness can visit each other if invited or for a good reason, but cannot stay even just overnight. Phew, incredible. A good spiritual practitioner could prolong his or her stay there, but not ordinary citizens. Ah, there come exceptions. Maybe chocolates can stay there longer than other people because they don't see them. <laughs> What? Nobody is here. <laughs> Don't smile. Huh? Don't smile. Don't smile. You're too bright over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. They have bright, brilliant teeth huh? that we all envy. Also, they have brilliant teeth. If they smile in the dark, you don't ever need any light. <laughs> That's no need to carry a flashlight when you go retreat. No. <laughs> you just smile and walk with, <laughs> with your teeth. <laughs> That's really convenient and very green indeed. <laughs> <coughs> Chocolate spells green, huh? G R 
E-E-N, huh? Okay. If adopted. <laughs> adopted even. <laughs> On the second plane. Oh, God, higher consciousness, heaven. If adopted by a higher plane being, one can upgrade his or her level and stay there. Aha. Uh-huh. Wow. Sounds familiar <laughs> to hear, right? <laughs> The higher being will infuse more light and energy into this lower being and thus lift him or her up. Wow, isn't that cool? Yes. If you guys are lucky, you might be adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where you're going? Next, you know, so be nice to everybody in case he goes up higher, he can adopt you. <laughs> That's cool, way. Eh? Is there anything else? A counsel from the ninth level on a mission as a supreme master, for example, eh? uh, while on a physical plane, can eh? always take a being from a lower plane to visit a higher plane, like from the third plane to the fifth plane even to visit. At will, any time. Not a perfect master, though. Even a master, a perfect master, 100% perfect master from the fifth plane cannot do this. Cannot take a being from the third level to visit the fifth plane. But a ninth level council can do it any time at will. Of course, they are the masters of the universe. I quote Jesus here, I am the light and the way of the world as long as I am in the world. That's what it means by that. Yeah, if he's here, he's the light. He can do anything. Hmm? He can brighten anybody's world. It's possible that the ninth council master can come back to earth again for a brief visit long after she or he finished his mission here in the physical body. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, can come back and visit. The ninth council master, eh? not the fifth level. Eh? Ninth council is the one above the, the eighth. Eh? Okay. It's never happened and never will, even though he can do it, but it doesn't happen. It won't happen. It just never will happen. It doesn't explain why. <laughs> it's not written. <laughs> she did not write it. Probably she didn't see it. Okay. Ah, she did explain. They are too occupied with the work of the whole universe and a more fulfilling, a more glorious job <laughs> as that, you know? Occupied with their job. And a more fulfilling, a more glorious one as that. I wrote like that. And is their real work. They are the master of the universe. <laughs> I just said before, how did she know that? <laughs> okay. How did I know that they are the master of the universe? I just said that, is it written here? Oh my God, I'm so smart. <laughs> After ending their task on earth, a ninth council master will withdraw all his energy to the fifth plane, topmost, and then further to the ninth. And no one from the fifth level is getting more exciting. <laughs> what happens? No one from the fifth level down will ever be able to see her or him again. Only the six, the seven and the eight and nine can see. But you won't feel anything missing. Do you feel anything missing here in the physical planet even? No. No. Oh, that's because I'm here and then I'm there and everywhere. Yeah. You feel the same. You feel better there even, yeah? You won't feel anything missing, yeah. So when I sit here, you don't feel anything missing, right? No. Yeah, see, the same. So if you go to the fifth level, you even feel much better than that. You feel complete, fulfilled, satisfied, content, happy. Blissful. Don't think anything. There's no brain there to think even. 
Sometimes the ninth council would descend to the lower levels, above the fifth, lower levels, <laughs> you know, like the eighth, for example. <laughs> <laughs> above the fifth, to teach beings there when he sees fit on rare occasions. Wow. These are the teachings you never heard before, eh? Have you? No. Not even from Buddha? No. Not even from Jesus? Who are the beings who got the te- get the teaching? I don't understand. They come to teach others. Six and seven. Oh. Of the six and oh, seven. Yeah, yeah. And no. who are they? Oh, the councils from the ninth. Yes. Sometimes come down to the lower levels, like the eight, the seven, the six, to teach a being there if necessary on rare occasions. Got it? We are talking about the ninth level council up to now. Where are you? On the ten, perhaps. <laughs> Yeah. So if a ninth council goes up, that's it, you know? Even a perfect master of the fifth level cannot see her or him again. However, on the very rare chance that the ninth council master comes to teach the sixth level beings, then a perfect master of the fifth level is allowed to come to attend and see the Ninth Council Master, only if this perfect one has been a disciple of the Ninth Council previously while he or she was on a physical plane. Do you understand now? Yes. Only the disciple of the Ninth Council can do that because they have connection already. So he can protect them, you know, they can weave a web of protection around that. A disciple of the fifth level, so lift him up for a while only. Huh? If you stay long, you die. Huh? Only at the sixth level uh, border, maybe, then you can be there. Yeah. Higher cannot. Huh? Mm. Wow, that's interesting, no? Yes. She is not allowed to go there to see any other council while they are there, however rare it is the occasion. Yeah? The fifth level beings are only allowed to come up to see their own master. When that master of the ninth council in the physical body accepted him as a disciple, then when he's in the fifth level plane, if the master comes to the sixth level to lecture or something, then that (laughs) disciple of the fifth level can be allowed to come up just to see that master council, not any other council. Yeah? Because I told you there are many councils, no? Yeah. Only if that council has been your master before and he comes to the sixth level or at the border, you are allowed to come up to see. Yeah. Wow, so strict, no? Not allowed to see any other council, however rare the occasion. Whew. Yeah, of course, what for, no? What are you doing with other masters? <laughs> oh, well, there's some more here even, look. I thought it's finished. Hmm. She wrote a lot, didn't she? (laughs) Again, only the perfect 100% and highest masters, 100% plus of the fifth plane, are allowed to visit the sixth plane on rare occasions when the ninth council master of his is there. But never further than the sixth, Mm. And even then, only if their master from the ninth is present at that time. As already mentioned above, ne? So I keep rewriting the same thing. <laughs> just make sure you guys understand, don't go nonsense. Don't just keep <laughs> over, overstaying your welcome, huh? <laughs> Suppose you become a perfect master in the fifth plane, then you're allowed to come see me maybe sometimes, if I'm on the sixth level, but don't overstep your privilege, huh? Because you'll be burned to a crisp, yeah? You're finished, non-existent, no more. Even the topmost level of the fifth level beings is not allowed to visit the sixth plane at will, even not at the border. And no one will ever be adopted into the sixth level or onward. 
Don't dream about it, huh? Nobody has adopted there. <laughs> we thought we could have adoption, no? <laughs> yeah? The four can be adopted into the fifth, but the fifth cannot be adopted, or any plane cannot be adopted into the sixth level, or seven, or eight, or nine. Such is the purity of the sixth level and upward, that no one from the lower realms can bear to be there, except through the protection from a ninth council, when such a great one is present. <sighs> no passport, no visa. Wow, even I am <laughs> speechless. Even the sixth level beings cannot protect any trespassers themselves. Suppose you wander into the sixth level and not any of the sixth level beings can protect you. You will be extinct, extinguished. You will be finished, annihilated. So just it be the order of the universe no one can alter. Even when the Ninth Council Master comes to earth or any other plane up to the fifth, he has to wrap herself up so densely so that all beings can bear to be around him. Or, or else the intensity of her light will burn all to cinders. He, she, is working in a safe, secure, and unimaginable, impenetrable vault, like a bank vault, right? You know, safe deposit, and the vault, isn't it? Vault, yeah. Vault. Wow. Wow, I told you it's heavy stuff. I just read somewhere, so it's heavy, but I didn't know it's that heavy. Can you bear it? It's okay? Yes. After Hungary, you can swallow it, right? <laughs> you, will, you will cry and stamp in your feet, and now you say, okay, whatever. <laughs> 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 if we can't, we can't, right? <laughs> what can we do, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Such a thing I have been writing, and I hid it in a black box up to now, and I've been moving like six, seven houses ever since, within one or two years, you know? I can't even see all this, where it goes and where it came from, in a black box, ne? and tape it all very securely. The other day I found it, I read it. I just read some, I didn't have time to read all of this, really, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Oh, there's some other revelation. Might as well have it all done with, hey? Who knows if any of you will live until tomorrow, no? Mm. <laughs> the story in the Bible about woman who is man's helper is not true, is incorrect. Yeah. It is only referred to as positive and negative power. Understand? It's not real like a woman and a man took out whatever that was, yeah? Generally speaking, women are on the positive power and men are on the... Tell me. <laughs> Sorry, yes, <laughs> negative. <laughs> Don't worry, I was a man last life. <laughs> it's just, it just for general people, not for you, the same. Okay, another note. The story, God made man first, then from one rip, Make his woman is incorrect. <laughs> it is written here. <laughs> I don't even remember all that. <laughs> of course, I know about it now, but I don't remember writing all this down. Can you imagine? That's why you have to have something to write down. Even I will forget this. Just a few years, two years or three years, I forgot already. Hmm? If I want to know all this, I have to sit again, <laughs> you know, and go from one step after another again, and I won't do that. Yeah. Okay, why is it incorrect? Hmm. False. <laughs> I say false. 
It was just a parable, you know, an example that from the first creation of positive energy came all the less positive, less powerful creation from the first. Both are sparks of the whole cosmos. They are okay as long as they remain in heavenly bliss. But if they want to know God, this origin, they must come down to a lower level, like the physical, to learn it again. Remember the apple in Eden? I read it here. I'm not asking you. <laughs> Miss it. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> I, I wrote it. I'm reading it to you. I'm not asking you. <laughs> Remember the apple is the wisdom. The urge to know God pushes them to go search for it. To be one with God again, to be whole with their origin, the serpent is the symbol of negative power. Remember the apple in the Eden? I, I read it here. I'm not asking you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss it. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> I, I wrote it. I'm reading it to you. I'm not asking you. <laughs> Remember, the apple is the wisdom. The urge to know God pushes them to go search for it. To be one with God again, to be whole with their origin, the serpent is the symbol of negative power. The negative power is the father's end of the creation, the opposite pole of the cosmos. Though it also came from the positive creative power, as it sprung out, its substance became denser and is the densest point of all creative energy. Um, unrecognizable from the origin. Thus becomes destructive. But so the urge of unity with the origin is also the strongest here. Thrusting upward with all its might and weight, destroying many things in its path. That's why it's destructive. It's just so longing to go back to the highest power. Yeah? Just like when you fall into a pit, you try with all your might to climb up, yeah, to the the plane, no? the flat land. No? Okay. Luckily, its density and heaviness can allow itself to a certain point. Hence, up to the second plane of the universe. So anyone who crosses to the third plane is free of its influence. You understand me? Luckily, it's negative, it's destructive, but because it's so heavy, it will not be able to climb too high. So it just stays at the second level at the most. So anybody who crosses over to the third plane is away from its you know, bad influence. Make sense to you? Yes. And to me too. <laughs> Luckily, I wrote it all down, no? otherwise all this is lost. You would never hear it from anybody. Yes. Yeah. Here, it establishes itself as a seat to control all below. Hmm. It has the power enough now to create, sustain, and destroy or remake, you know, recycle its citizens and its universe from this point down, from the second down. The positive power from the Most High created only down to the third plane. And from the second plane once are the negative powers creation, though eventually they will be refined and return to the higher dimension. It's difficult for the citizens here, I mean, from the second plane down, to go up the, you know, jealous God. The jealous God is him, yeah. 
who thinks he created them and hold them hostage. Though he only borrowed power from God, <laughs> from the higher dimension, to create some distortion of the origin. He is possessive of his creatures. I think we're done. No more left. Okay then, that's it. Wow, it's a book, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was number two, and now I see number three, four, five, six. See, wow. Wow, what? Sleepy? <laughs> number two. See? I thought finished at two. And now I just see, oh, number three here. So I thought I finished it, but I haven't. You want to hear some more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Really? Finishing. Finish it? Yeah. <laughs> Only the highest master from the fifth plane could rescue them. Hence, God sends his son yeah, from time to time. Then the son trains some able new masters to continue his work after. While his son is still on earth, there will be selected teachers like those, but only one son of the highest master, of all masters, working through them. Yeah? No matter how many masters on earth have been selected to do the work of the Son of God, there's only one highest. That's why Jesus said, I'm the only son of God. I'm the best. I'm the highest. Through me, you can go to the Father. Remember? Yes. Not every master says that. Don't mistake humility for honesty. Jesus said that because he knew it. All the masters, they are not. You have you ever seen any master saying, I am the Son of God, I am the only one? Yeah, understand? No. Not the present ones, not the past ones. Rarely, rarely. Some, yes, if it is Jesus' reincarnation, or before Jesus' incarnation, you know, or it's really from the highest level, like the Ninth Council, then okay, he can say that. He must know it before he says that, otherwise the punishment is heavy. You know, you proclaim something that's insulting heaven, you know what I mean? Something that you're not, yeah? And it's no good, no good, no good, yeah? Go out there in, in front of the Buckingham Palace and say, I am Prince Charles, can I do that? <laughs> no! <laughs> only Prince Charles can say that. I am the only prince, the only heir, prince of England. He can say that because he is. You see what I mean? Yeah. Lesser ones cannot proclaim like that. So similarly, heaven law is even more strict, no? Heaven is even more, <laughs> I would say, transparent. You can't do anything against heaven without being punished, no? Just by the law of itself, not like heaven punishes you. The Lord of Karma will punish, and that's enough. Mm. So no matter how many teachers have been chosen, there's only one son, the highest master of all masters, working through them. Yeah. So you see, most of the masters, they're very humble, you know? They say, my master works through me. I'm a slave of my master and all that. Something like that, you know what I mean? You, you should read that in all literature of all the so-called masters up to date. Did, did you? Yes. Yeah, okay. They always are accredited to their greater master, eh? They don't proclaim that they are God or they are the son of God and things like that. Because they know they're not. Not because they're humble. Please, don't mistake it. They're just honest, okay? Yeah. Maybe they're humble also, yeah, because they know what they are, so they're humble, and this is very good. But don't think Jesus is not humble, yeah? You understand me? Yes. He was very humble, that's why he walked bare feet. He endured all these insults, he endured everything. He, he had to hide, he had to uh, run away from persecution until he'd been persecuted. That is the humility of a son of God. But he said the truth. 
Yeah? He said, I am the son of God. I'm the only son of God. And that was correct at that time. Yeah? And it's still correct. Because other masters are not the son of God. Not from the ninth level. You understand? Not sent by God himself. That's why. Yeah? So when Jesus said that, he just spoke the truth. But nobody could bear it. Humility you must have. He couldn't. <laughs> If a king says, I am a king, how humble can he be? <laughs> Does he have to be humble if he says he's a king? No, right? He might be very humble, but he says, I am the king. <laughs> I am the king. Yes, I am the king. <laughs> this is another note, ne? It has nothing to do with upstairs. It's another day. The Lord of Karma sits on second plane and is very strict with who is worthy. To go up above him. <laughs> Can you imagine? Of course, he's mad, no? He's angry. <laughs> Suddenly you are with him, you are his citizen, and then you go above him. Who can bear that? Yeah? So he tries with all his might to stop you, and you can't blame him. You can only feel sorry for the poor guy, no? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to do more guaning, maybe. <laughs> He's right to that, you know, he's right in that respect. One has to be really yearning to go back to God or else get trapped in all illusionary pleasures of the senses and never get out. Like a drunkard clings to his habit of liquor, knows not a better lot. For, for I told you already about animals and trees. Yeah, already done. Only one, <laughs> funny, huh? Only one page left. <laughs> so you had a little bonus, huh? No complaint, is it? <laughs> hmm? No, huh? Good, no? Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I should have loved to st stop where, you know, the, the Ninth Council was in a secure, safe, unimaginably impenetrable vault. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's not a very good position to be in, is it? Feels very suffocating sometimes. I feel like claustrophobic sometimes, suffering, suffocating sometimes. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's it. Now we're going to the feet plane, perhaps. <laughs> Accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> Dependingly. Yeah. Now I'm all wrapped up. <laughs> hey, okay? Somebody, I think, long time ago, must have known about the ninth level. You know, maybe some of the ninth level councils had come down before. I told you how many had come down before already. I'm the 20th, remember? Yeah. I said 19 came down before, yeah? I mean, in the long villain history of mankind, and not just today, okay? They came to the physical level, and not necessarily came all to this earth, but some other kinds of, yeah, earth-like planets. So somebody must have come here before, or perhaps it was somebody like with the name C.H. or something like that, yeah? Somebody you know <laughs> came down here before and uh, talked something about the ninth level, you know? Because in China they have a goddess called the ninth level goddess, Jiu Qian Xuan Li, yeah. The mysterious ninth level goddess. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the woman <laughs> once in China. And she reportedly uh, cook, you know, brew the five color stones to mend the sky. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Who else can that be? Who can cook stones to mend the sky? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Must be using, you know, five levels of consciousness mm. huh? to tell people to be good in order to repair the, the planet. Huh? And the ozone layer, climate change, etc. Yeah. So, therefore, we have the ninth level mysterious goddess. 
or else how do we know that? Yeah. And also sometimes the English people, when they're happy, they say, I'm on the ninth cloud. Yes. Yeah. Why not seventh? Mostly people already know seventh heaven, right? Yes. Ninth cloud. That's what it is. It all came from these secret talks, you know, about the ninth level. In the old times, they didn't always write down everything, yeah? Maybe they wrote it on the stone, and then after a while, the typhoon came, the stone broke and all ran into the sea, and it's gone. Yeah? Long time ago, they didn't have inscription on paper, no? Only on stones, yeah? So sometimes we, the uh, archaeologists, yeah? dig out something with some stones and with some some kind of writing or some maybe they think it's just a bird or a horse or something, but maybe it is the writing of those times. You see what I mean? The language of those times. Yeah. Therefore you can see sometimes some tablet of stone. There are many pictures of similar bird all over. And then suddenly another horse, another bird somewhere. <laughs> they must be talking about something, no? Yeah? Like a sentence, no? Anyway, I'm just guessing. Uh, what am I to know anything about archaeology? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, something like that. So It's a ninth cloud. Yeah? You are on a ninth, ninth cloud now, right? Huh? Are you? Yes. Oh, sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the tenth even. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I'm going, otherwise I'll speak until tomorrow. You guys okay? Want some more cakes? No. Okay, no. Then you can... Should we meditate immediately or go out and have fresh? No, meditate better. Meditate better? Yes. Good, good. Warmongers belong to hell, not to our civilized world. To bless animals, the utmost kindness must be shown, the more the better. Tenderness and loving kindness are basic principles of God's heavenly kingdom. Abdul Baha Vegetarian, Baha'i Faith. So, lo me si po devi ton le po tenti. Ni ru go neng gou de hua, ni kan na ge fo a ye bei chan dao jiao le. Yesu ke du ye xiang bei ding le. Mohammed de xiang shi le, chu ta he ping le. Hai shi yi yang bei zai chui sha zheng ge bei zi. Jiang de hua, wo hui diao yan lei, wo hui ku a. Hao duo le ming shi de wei sha han chan le. 不是用刀割就很快而已。有一次我跑累了，就跟他们说：“哎呀，死就死嘛，算了，我累了，我不跑了。”他说：“不行，不行。”我说：“怎么不行？”他说：“世界还是要你，那我就听他来，听这样我还
me vive na chile mi mi tokunu mi de mi no poha mi do nwiwa egbe ton me ye irodo sin bi be me so ihuzu uzu gbe ton le ton papa we afoton go lo mando me afoton ji lo mesi po devi ton le po tentin e je gudo ton ba mesi gaide po mo lo bo na jako ha fi enu bi ko sin e papa we ten we go lo mando me tanton ji lo nuiwa mi ton nu nwen wen ko ji e je gudo ton wen dagbe dagbe le mi no po ha mi lo me mo gbon we kela nu gonu mesi dodo sin ha itonji nu nu wi wa dagbe dagbe te fo le mi gbo bonu mi ni san gbe mi ton po ho me yin gracious viewers we thank you for your company for today's episode entitled the origin and evolution of human beings part 15 of 15 on between master and disciples Coming up next is find a living master to reunite with the great source of all things. Part 7 of 8 on words of wisdom right after noteworthy news. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more constructive programming. May your lives be graced with kindness and nobility. Make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.